Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years. World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars. The power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Hi, my welcome back to day two of the Northern Travel Series here at Trust Power Stadium in Tauranga. Day one was an exciting day. Auckland City taking away two wins, and they're back in action this morning. We've got a big day ahead. Four games of futsal starting at 9 a.m. The girls are back on at 11. Then we'll see a game at 1 and finally finish the day at 5 p.m. today. This game, well, Auckland City, they got away yesterday when the two teams played, and they'll look to bounce and continue that form today. But for the surge, well, they'll be looking to see if they can get their first points of the competition. It's going to be an interesting encounter. My name's Mark Matzis, and I'll be calling you through the action today. Let's take a chance to have a look at the starting lineups. Thank you, Mark. Starting today for Auckland City, we have Vaughan Somerville and goal. Then Sam, Art and Denny Twig, along with Thomas Picken. And for Bay of Plenty Surge, we've got Chris Priest in goal, Thomas McMillan, Aaron Carter, Daniel Watts and Mario Ramos. That closes out the starting lineups for today. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Ronan. Well, another day. Big day ahead of us on the microphone. Four games. 
three this morning and then back this evening for the final game. Referees are ready, but it seems that the players haven't appeared yet from the changing rooms. We'll take that opportunity to talk about yesterday's action. Auckland City, while well, they were clinical, Ronan. Yeah, especially the second goal, uh, second game, I should say, against um, the Rapids. Um, show, show their quality um, and uh, I'm science for the rest of the um, competition. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see how they come out today in, in this morning's game. Uh, you know, they struggled, I guess, to get going yesterday when they played the surge, were down 2-0, uh, eventually winning 8-4, but it was probably the start that they wouldn't be happy with. So I, I'd be, I think they'll focus on that first, you know, first 10 minutes of this half. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, you know, it was their first competitive game in, in a while, so um, just need to get some of the rust out early on. Um, Serge had already played the game, so, so they were straight out of the blocks. Uh, but if you look at their second game against the Rapids, Auckland City started quite quick, even though they fell behind. Um, oh, no, they didn't, actually. They, they, they took the lead in that one. So, yeah, I think, I think they'll, they'll start strong. And, of course, next up we have the women's game as well. Papakura taking on the power. I mean, although the scoreline was 5-0, I, I don't think that was probably a fair reflection of how tight the game was. Yeah, I think Papakura started really fast, and that, that, that fast start um, probably paid dividends later on. Uh, Waiwa Pau grew into the game. They just need to f find a way to create genu genuine opportunities and um, further up the court. If they can get that and, and put Papakura under a bit more pressure, we should be in for a, a good game um, second up. Well, the players are ready, and they're making their way out onto the court. Josh Margett's obviously holding things up at the moment as he finally finds his spot in the line. I think here for the surge, they'll start strong again, and it'll be how Auckland City can hold off that. I guess going for that starting rotation with Pickin and the Twigs going for speed. Yeah, they've gone for an electric four first up, so like we talked about, I think they want to start quick um, and not allow Serge into the game at all. Looking at Serge starting starting four, I mean, they've changed it a little bit, but um, it's a strong, strong four for them, um, so hopefully they can bear the brunt of that initial start and start as well as they did yesterday. Uh, so the Surge, they are playing in the blue and black strip. And Auckland City in the white with yellow stripe. I mean, looking at the Surge, I think Aaron Carter, he was a standout yesterday. Yeah, I think, I think he scored three goals for them um, in the first game. He was dangerous throughout. Uh, so I'm sure he'll be looking to, to, to kick on. Be interested to see how those players' legs are today because a few of them had quite a, bit, a lot of minutes in both games. Uh, talking to Coach Ramos, I believe he'll try to rotate a little bit more and, and give those boys a bit more of a rest. Now the captains have come forward to the halfway line. Ashby Peckham and Ramos Jr. As the teams are in their huddle and getting close to being ready. Of course, if you are in the area today, out here at Trust Power Arena in Tauranga, to come down. It was great support yesterday. There's a few fans that have come in for this early-ish Sunday morning start. As the referees do their checks on the nets, players make their way to the bench, and we look almost ready to go here. It's been a fantastic weekend, and... It keeps on coming. Next weekend, all teams are up in Auckland. Three days of action there, including the teams from down south. So we do look ready. It will be Auckland City in possession to get us started. Referees look set. And we are good to go here. There's Auckland City. Well, I'll be in possession of the ball first here. We discussed... Just the way that they want to start, probably better in this game. And the surge, well, they've started both of their games strongly. It'll be just closing out the matches that they'll be focusing on. As Pickett uses Twig far side now, he comes central. And a chance here to get a shot away. Drops back for Pickett, but it's 
Watts, who's there. And he clears that one away out of court. Kick in far side for Auckland City. As Pickin tries to shot him, but that's straight at Watts and Ramos. And Pickin again this time comes to the centre of the court. Dropping back for Twig. Sends this one forward for Twig. And it's going to fall there for Priest. And it's now the turn of the surge in possession. This is where they were strong yesterday as Carter trying to get around Twig, but that falls there for Pickin. And they go back as far as Somerville. And they'll start again from the back. So I guess in terms of holding possession at the moment, City doing well in the start of this match. Yeah, I think I like Surge's uh, set up against Auckland City a little bit better than Rapids. I think they've, they've sort of allowed them to have the ball and like set up in their own half, not like giving them too much space in behind. And I think that's why they sort of were in the game for large periods yesterday. As Ramos chips this one down the line for Carter, but again turned over from Auckland City as Pickin steps back inside to get around Watts. And they'll set up again here. Will Auckland City as a ball forward here for Pickin. So it will be a corner here as a touch taken there on the way through from the surge. So a set piece here for Auckland City. Twig can't hit that one properly as it's sent forward here for McMillan. Battles well, but loses out in the end. And a foul is called there by the referee. And players can't believe it. And it is with Ramos far side now. Carter. What can he do early on? Loses out there. Stepping forward. Is Twig. Near side now for Pickin as he drives down the line, but a good challenge there from Carter. Puts it out of court on this near side. Both teams just almost finding each other out at the moment. Didn't really any clear opportunities as Twig comes in there and it's fallen here. It's still going though as Twig and the challenge says the referee and it's fallen here for Ramos and that will be a foul and the second foul of the game here for Auckland City. Yeah, I think that the ball also like not quite getting um, as long as fluid as it has been before getting stuck under the player's feet quite a bit in the initial phases. And there's a good touch there, but out of court, handball actually calls the referee there. So the foul count, two to one at the moment, nil nil the scoreline. Two and a half minutes gone, as cleared away here. And as Twig steps forward now, chance for Twig, back post, but blocked there by Ramos. And as he just slows the play down. Ramos, Carter, trying to step back there past Twig, but has to go back as far as McMillan. Watts now, far side, as he tries to drive past, but it's out of court. Almost feels like a 9am on a Sunday, Ronan. <laughs> yeah, it's been a slow start, but I think um, we can expect that. Both teams, two games last night, long day. Definitely look to build into it as the game goes on. There's Pickin now. Happy to just knock the ball around at the moment, uh, Auckland City. Near side now for Pickin. Bit of a heavy touch from him, but no harm done. There's Twig. Moving the ball between them. Twig. Just a bit too much on that one, and that's easy for Priest as he rolls near side for Carter. Ramos back as far as McMillan and a good run down the line from him back post ball there but out of court on the snares tied but it was a good opportunity there back post but just couldn't keep it in there
There's Pekin, drives down the line, still going as Pekin in a touch there from McMillan. Got a bit of cover defence there from McMillan, off Ramos' shoulder. And changes now for Auckland City. Margetts, Ashby, Peckham, Padal and Morgan onto the court. How this game's going so far probably suits this four. Yeah, I think it also suits the surge. I think they'd like to like be solid for a bit. Not give Auckland too many chances and stay in the game for as long as they can. And there's a touch there from Margetts out of court on this near side. Kick in for the surge. Carter drops for McMillan. Padau coming forward there, but out of court off him. No real opportunities yet inside this first five minutes. Both sides just moving the ball well. Not really moving anywhere on the court. And there's a press coming there from Margetts and forces the error from Ramos. And it has turned over. I quite like that decision making there from Ramos. Too often we see players trying to do too much in dangerous positions. Off, kicking the ball out and offering a reset is often the, the smart choice. As Morgan now drops for Padal, far side for Ashby Peckham, and a good challenge there from Carter. But that's still going to fall for Ashby Peckham. As he drops for Padal. And they'll start again from the back here, will Auckland City. Margetts. Good ball there for Ashby Peckham. And that will be a foul there. Just a bit of a hand on the shoulder there of Ashby Peckham as he got around, and that's two fouls each. Interestingly, against this Forbes, Bay players who are just stepping a little bit higher. As Margetts can't get that round, Carter and pressure coming, but that's going to fall back for Somerville. He just launches that one long. Margetts not too happy with that, though. Like Somerville could have kept position there and, and recycled the ball. There's changes now. Kawana and Howard onto the court. There's that one. Almost Kawana's first touch leads to a goal. Morgan drops back for Margetts. Near side for Padal. As he drives into the half. Ashby Peckham. No way through at the moment for Auckland City. And force back here. Chance here for Ramos, but can't get enough of a touch on that, and it's out of court. Good pressure there from Ramos. And it will be a kick in on this near side. Almost six minutes gone in this first half. Nil nil the scoreline, two fouls each. Shots on target. A much higher starting position defensively from Surge against this set of four. As Priest called into action there, a chance for Padel to head. Still hasn't dropped here, chance here. And that's side netting there from Margetts. As Priest throws long here. And for Howard, but Ashby Peckham did enough there. And it's gone through for a clearance for Somerville. Ashby Peckham near side for Margetts as Carter does well there drops it back for Priest and he just sends that one away Auckland City starting to build that pressure through possession yeah but like I said if you look at Serge's starting position defensively they're pressing this four a lot higher so it'll be interesting to see if they turn it, turn it over it's how they scored um, yesterday in, the, in game one there's a press coming here from the surge, but cleared away by Auckland City, but it's fallen here for Carter. He's Howard with him. Uses Howard. Chance here for the surge. A cleared away there by Margetts. Good opportunity for the surge. Yeah. Again, strong technical fall for surge, that so they'll back themselves to create opportunities. There's a shot coming in there from Carter, blocked by Padel. And he'll come off the court, replaced by Mia.
And his first touch is a shot, but it's wide of the target. Good shooting opportunity there. Good passage to play from the surge. Very much so. Uh, we'd like to see Auckland City change it up a little bit, but let's see how they adapt. As Bullford here for Morgan, who drops it back for Margetts. As Ashby Peckham gets a bit too much of that and sends it into the stands. Will be ball here with Priest. As he shapes to go long for Mia. That gives a good hit to a chance here for Kawana. But he just can't get that shot on target. Good opportunity. If you remember yesterday, their first goal came from getting long ball out of a wide press. So, one of both teams spoke about that overnight. As Margetts drops for Padau far side. Mia coming forward on him, gets a touch on it. Will be out of court. Somerville drops for Morgan. Margetts. Pressure coming, but Margetts gets away from it. Down the line here for Padau. Uh, can only hit Mia on the way through. Kicking for Auckland City. As Ashby Peckham gets the shot away, blocked there by Mia. Very good basics there from Josh Margetts. Keep the ball moving over a press. Not slow, it's got to be quick. Easily breaks that wide press. There's Morgan now. Bit of space for him. Gets a shot away, but blocked there by Kawana this time. Auckland City's turn to apply a bit of pressure. It's a tense battle at the moment as Margaret steps over. Ashby Peckham's shot is wide of the target. And Morgan unable to keep that one in. So Priest drops short for Kawana. No, it's Ramos. And good hands there from Ronan Nyker. Ramos, forward for Kawana. Still going. There's Kawana, good pressure there from Morgan. As he manages to get a foot on that one, as we see McMillan replacing Ramos. Yeah, I think that Serge will look to rotate Ramos and McMillan and that fixed up position throughout the game, just to have that little bit of balance and stability. Slightly different tactics today. They did almost use the sets of four yesterday, but today they seem to be not really keeping fours together. It's the rotation around. Maybe a tactic there from Coach Ramos. Auckland City, well, they're sticking with their fours. Yeah, I think it's smart from them. They, they ran out of legs late on in the game, so hopefully trying to balance out those minutes. Maybe not having the strongest four on at all times, but it does allow them to keep a bit of more of a consistent platform to give them a chance later on in the half. As Howard wins a kick in on this near side. And a chance here for the surge, but it's picked up there by Somerville. He'll throw long here for Morgan, but can't keep that one in court. Rolls all the way. It will be a goal line clearance here for Priest. And he'll throw long. Trying to find Howard, but a good hit there from Padau. Falls for Kawana. Howard, near side for Mia. He tries to drive around. Gets the shot away, but blocked there by Morgan. Fantastic facilities here at Trust Power Arena. As Mia trying to find a way through. Auckland City looking to make changes, but they just haven't had the ball. Howard's sitting quite deep here. I wonder if they're going to cycle it around to him. As McMillan takes the shot blocked again by Morgan. Another kick in here for the surge. Here we go. Howard. Oh, good save there in the end from Somerville. Had to be made. Not sure if it took a wee touch by Padal on the way through, but good opportunity there for the surge to open the scoring. Just over eight minutes gone here in this first half. Nil-nil the scoreline. And there'll be another corner here. Yeah, the ball to Howard is as long as there's a lot of space. Rolling it to McMillan each time. It's quite short, quite difficult to get a shot off there. So I'd like to see maybe McMillan run the block. 
Here we go. Oh, yeah, there's a shot coming in there from Howard. It's just wide of the target. And changes come now to Marty. Hawkins, Espinosa, and Paulson onto the court. There's Espinosa now. Chips forward here for Amadi. Drops back for Hawkins. Gets a shot away, but blocked there by Howard. And that's where he's dangerous, is Amadi. Yeah, they're going to have to readjust. You can't leave Amadi isolated with the fixo. He's very good at holding position. As Hawkins will get us back underway. Espinosa near side now for Paulson in a bit of space. Manages to keep that one in, but sent back by Mia. Far side now for Espinosa. Hawkins. Paulson. This is good from Auckland City. Moving the defence around, but McMillan breaks that play day, but it is out of court on this near side. Kick in for Auckland City. Hawkins. Paulson gets around Mia. Still going, but it's fallen there for Howard. But again, play is broken down as Espinosa comes forward, gets the shot away, and it's in. A little touch on the way through there from Kiwana. But Espinosa opens the scoring, 1 0. Yeah, Espinosa fakes the shot twice. Gets broken down as Espinosa comes forward, gets the shot away, and it's in. He stepped up the ball speed. Uh, and that's how they created that chance. Nine minutes gone in this first half. 1-0 the scoreline now in favour of Auckland City. As Espinosa comes again, trying to find the feet of Amadi there, but cleared away by the surge. Out of court, far side kick in. You can just feel the intensity has stepped up now in this set, isn't it, Mark? Yes. No, this four has really created those opportunities. Amadi up top just offers that... Danger. And it just changes the way. And as Mia does well to keep that one in. Far side now for McMillan. Howard. Mia. Paulson steps forward on him. Battling hard as Paulson. As Espinosa comes across. Falls now for Mia. Still going as Espinosa. And a good challenge. And cleared away by Kwan. It's there. It's in. Wow. Hawkins battled hard there. And managed to get the ball across the face of goal. And it's that man. The only one who didn't think I was out was Hawkins. And he managed just to knock it across goal and tap it for Armadi at the back post. Well, that's the sixth goal of the weekend for Armadi. And 2-0 the scoreline now in quick succession. Auckland City getting into their work. I guess the one difference today is that they didn't concede a slower start again, but as we see Cooper onto the court, will be a kick in now for the surge. Yeah, just before those two goals, I was about to say, it's, the surge playing quite a risky game, defending with three quite high. So much space in behind with Armadi isolated. The second goal came from that. As Paulson now steps forward, finds the feet of Amadi again, rolls off. Had a good challenge there from McMillan, but it's still with Auckland City. Far side with Hawkins. Steps around Mia. And eventually it's out of court and will be a kick in here for the surge. What Auckland City doing really well compared to when they played them yesterday is they're finding the target in the middle of the court. Saw with Art in the in the first first set and now with Amadi. There's a good edge, creates an opportunity. Turn there from Mia, but a good save from Somerville. But it's Auckland City who come away with it now. Espinosa trying to find that ball into the centre. But it's McMillan, I think it was, who got the challenge in. I almost half expected Espinosa to fake that that cross ball shot because it was the obvious pass and to cut inside like he did early on. Will be Paulson to get us back under the way. Shot comes in, traffic in the way. Amadi still going back heels. But Priest gets on that one. And drops for McMillan. Far side now for Mia. Uses Cooper. And a good challenge there from Espinosa. Paulson comes in to help out. Still going as Cooper. Centering ball. But blocked there by Hawkins. And Auckland City will come again. It's relentless at the moment. Hawkins far side. Tries to find the feet there of Paulson. But McMillan comes away with it. Cooper now. 
drops for Mia. Pressure coming from Paulson, and he just has to clear that one away. Out of court kick in for Auckland City on this near side. Nine minutes remaining in this first half. 2-0 the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Two fouls each. Yes, sir, you just need to try and see out this set. And it's chip forward here for Amadi, but it's McMillan who gets it away. But still with City at the back with Paulson. As he starts to try and find a way through here. Cutting back and forth on Cooper. Gets a shot away, but it's Mia who slides in there. Good defensive work. There, and it will be a kick in for Auckland City. Hawkins shot away, and that's in. How did that find a way in? As Hawkins just reads the needle to the back post, and it sneaks in. Yeah, just a little bit too easy, I think, um, for that one. I mean, it was a good finish putting it in the bottom corner, but so you just got to sleep a little bit, and again, Auckland City punished them. They're taking their opportunities at the moment are uh, Auckland City. Clinical. And all three goals coming from this rotation at the moment. Yep, they definitely stepped it up with this four coming on. They picked up the intensity. The ball speed is specifically early on. It's just disorganised the surge defence. Yeah, as Espinosa steps forward here. Probably need to change something do the surge as a shot comes in there from Amadi but blocked by McMillan. Will be a kick in on this near side for Auckland City. Confidence high with this rotation as Hawkins gets it in the middle to Amadi, drops it back but still there as Lorenzo runs that one out of court. And it will be a kick in for Auckland City. Just no possession at the moment for the surge. Yeah, unfortunately, all the momentum with Auckland City. Surge just have to, like I say, have to see the set out. And it's cleared away there by Watts. And they can reset their defensive line. You see the way Amati sits so high on the court. Pretty much standing next to the goalkeeper, Priest. If you look at Serge's uh, starting defensive position, so uh, they've dropped right back a little bit, which I think is smart. Limiting that space in the middle of the court. And as Hawkins, far side, uses Paulson in the centre of the court. Hawkins again. Amati keeps that one in court. Coming across is Lorenzo. And it will be a kick in for Auckland City. It's just the space that Amadi creates as he goes high. As Hawkins' shot comes in and a save this time by Priest. Pushed away out of court on the far side. Good save there. As changes coming for Auckland City as Espinosa cuts back inside. Can he get the shot away? Drops for Amadi. Rolls. But they've come away with it here and a chance. Two on one for the surge. Toes, but wide of the target there from McMillan. Had Mia with him, chose to go himself. Let's see how this uh, Auckland City four play. They typically they're the fastest set, play at a high tempo. If they keep that up, it can be very dangerous for the surge. So it is the three twigs and picking on the court now for Auckland City. See if they can match what their last rotation did as twig on this near side. Dancing around, trying to find a way through Watts there. Pickett steps inside Lorenzo. Gets the shot away, and a good save there. Power on that shot from Pickett. But straight at the keeper, and Priest is able to parry that one away. Yeah, at the moment, Auckland City are creating opportunities just inside the half, mid-court, and shooting with accuracy. Will be a corner here as Pickett. Steps on this one. Mia coming forward on him. Still going as Pickin falls for Twig. Centre court as Twig steps inside. Pickin as he tries to flick that one down the line past McMillan. But it is out of court. Will be a kick in for Auckland City. Twig drops back for Pickin. Twig again. As Mia does well there, but 
And it's Twig who comes away with it and drops it back for Pickin. He steps back inside, still going is Pickin. And that's nice play there from Auckland City. They cleared away in the end by McMillan. They're defending hard at the moment. Six and a half minutes remaining here in this first half. 3-0. The scoreline in favour of Auckland City. There's a shot coming in there from Twig. Still going is Twig. As Mia drops that one back. And it is out of court again on the far side. Still with Auckland City. Possession, a premium at the moment for the surge. As it falls for Twig, who just steps over the ball. And does well there, but cleared away by McMillan. But it's still possession for Auckland City. That gives him a chance to make some changes as Ramos comes back onto the court, replacing McMillan. Twig. Near side for Pickett. Good movement here from Auckland City as Twig almost gets on that one, but Priest equal to it as they drop short for Mayer and a chance for possession for the surge. It's been all Auckland City and it's turned over again as Twig brings that one down. A good challenge there from Watts out of court on the far side. But it's tough going at the moment for the surge. Yeah, they have to find a happy medium where they're defending because at the moment, if they defend too deep, they're allowing shots from about this, this range. Yeah, if they good. defend too high, they're allowing the, too much space for the target. Good challenge there from Watts out of court on the far side. As it toes in and across the face of the goal there. Twig couldn't get the touch on it and changes coming here. And it's Carter and Harris onto the court for the surge. And a good challenge there from Twig. And that is a kick and one there for the surge. And here's Ramos, jockey's back, but off twig five minutes remaining here in this first half 3-0 the scoreline Auckland City lead over the surge Carter near side drops for Harris he turns double team coming chance here for twig on the counter has twig with him good defensive work there from the surge got numbers behind the ball and it's out of court on the far side for a kick in. Young Ollie Harris in the court. Now for Surge. Had a tough time yesterday. Let's see how he goes today. Yeah, he's picking now. Steps forward. Carter looking on him. Gets round one. Far side now for Twig. Centering ball and good save there from Priest as the touch from Pickin was on target. But couldn't beat the keeper as Ramos comes forward now. Carter. Near side for Ramos as he flicks down the line for Carter, but it's again Twig. Good challenge. And they turn over possession. Twig. Steps inside, still going, but good defensive work there from the surge. Carter in a bit of space. Two on one here. Carter still going, tries to find the feet there of Harris. And it eventually ends up out of court, will be a corner. Yeah, I'd like to see the running block on the first first fender and then potentially a fixer putting up keepers left. That, that opportunity opened up early on for Surge. Let's see if... No, not this time. Just head straight to Auckland City there and they'll have a chance to clear their lines. Pickin. Good defensive work there from Kawana up top, but Pickin holds the ball nicely. Sent forward here. Twig drops for Pickin. Back as far as Twig. Three and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Still 3 0. As Carter gets in the way of that one, but just gives it back straight away. That's the pressure at the moment that Auckland City 
are creating relentless attack as Kawana does well there and a shot coming in but it's wide of the target and change is coming Morgan Margaret, Spadal and Ashby Peckham onto the court for Auckland City yeah, I'd like to see this set of forward move the ball a little quicker when they do have it to keep up that pressure on the surge as Carter turns that one over Kawana coming forward with it drops for Ramos but out of court on the far side in favour of Auckland City says referee Anthony Riley we just can't seem to get into this game at the moment can the surge had a few opportunities but it's been Auckland City been clinical when they've had the opportunities as Morgan brings that one down Drops back as far as Margetts. Far side now for Ashby Peckham. Drives the shot in off Kawana. Falls to the feet of Ramos. Chance here for Ashby Peckham, but shot again. Blocked by Kawana. Good opportunity there for Ashby Peckham. Get that left foot going as he goes back post where Morgan was waiting. Ashby Peckham, chance here. Good save from Priest. Got to be very careful there. Don't want to give them easy opportunities. Just play the ball out. There's Carter. Far side now for Harris as he tries to get around. Margetts. Two minutes remaining here. 3-0 the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Ramos tries to get round Padel. Still going as Ramos, but it's Ashby Peckham who comes across to deal with that one. Let's see if Serge can keep the ball, but in the opposition half. Carter. They're going to need options though. Far side for Harris. Ramos, bit of room for him. Kawana drops back for Ramos, but just not enough on the pass there. As Padel gets on that one, but forced out of court, will be a kick in for the surge. keep that one in court and it's turned over one minute 40 remaining in this first half Margetts long here for Morgan good touch from him sends Ashby Peckham just a bit too far in front of him there's Ramos steps forward near side for Carter Ramos, pressure coming now from Auckland City and good work there from Ashby Peckham is out of court on the stair side kick in for the surge half time probably can't come soon enough for the surge at the moment as that falls for Ashby Peckham Morgan one on one with the keeper good save from the keeper but it falls again and cleared away there by Harris good work there from Priest save had to be made Morgan one on one with the keeper can't finish and it will be a goal line clearance for Somerville Ooh. yes Morgan gets the head on that trying to find the feet of Padal but it's out of court on this near side Carter, 50 seconds remaining. Ashby Peckham wins that one. And a foul given away there by Harris. Third foul for the surge. Ashby Peckham takes it down the line, but cleared away there by Harris. So he's going to have to step up a little bit higher here defensively. Can't allow it to me free shots at the edge. There we go. As Margit steps inside, finds the feet of Padel. Chance for him to shoot. Back post, but it falls here for the surge. Charging forward. 
Yeah, they go far side, but it's Morgan who tracks back there and clears it away from the feet of Ramos. 30 seconds remaining in this first half. Can the surge get one back? Great recovery work there from, from Morgan. Just getting a toe and snuffing out that potential opportunity for surge. As Carter gets the shot away, but blocked there by Morgan. Falls here for Kawana. Chance for him to shoot. Toes, but blocked there by Ashby Peckham. And it's Margetts who comes away with it. Still going as Margetts. Back post is Ashby Peckham, but cleared away there by Carter. Good read there from Carter. And it's Padel near side for Ashby Peckham. Morgan. Good challenge there from Ramos, says the referee. Driving forward is Ramos. Still going is Ramos. Near side for Carter. Chance here for Carter. And great defensive work there by Margetts. Transition game suits Surge. All going through wanting to get back into structures. And Somerville saves from the kick there from Somerville as Kawana gets the shot away. Ramos. And that'll do it here for this first half. Auckland City have been clinical again. Three goal to nil lead into the break. We'll be back here in five minutes at Trust Power Arena. Don't go anywhere. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years.
at the moment in favour of Auckland City and it's this four on the court where the goals have come from Hawkins, Amadi, Espinosa and Poulton Ronan Nike, what did you make of that first half? Yeah, Auckland City caused them quite a few problems um, I, I don't mind Serge defending in their own half but as they get closer to the goal they need to step a little bit higher so balance between um, being solid but also not allowing too much space in front of their own goal as the referees get us back underway here it will be the surge in possession of the ball Mia far side McMillan Watts and Mia on the court as it's turned over straight away here in Auckland City their chance now to get back where they left off in that first half as Espinosa steps forward Hawkins does well to keep that one in court. Yeah, there's a good head there from Watts as Mia comes forward with that good challenge there from Paulson. Will be out of court on the far side, kicking for the surge. Yeah, it's just not enough on that pass as McMillan does well to hold on to it from the challenge from Amadi. And yeah, it's a heavy fall there for McMillan. It was a good challenge there from Espinosa, but it's a hard court to fall on. Yeah, I think it was a strong challenge. He just landed awkwardly on his, on his back. Just clutching the top of his hip there. And as we'll get up back underway with Mia. Drops here for McMillan, who seems to be okay. There's pressure coming there from Amadi. McMillan does well. And the end clears that out of court. Will be a kick in for Auckland City. Ronan, what do you think the surge need to do to get back into this one? Look, it's only 3 0, so can't give away too much early on. Like I said, it's just solid, and when they have the opportunities, when they have technical four on, then they can press higher win the ball high and create opportunities that way. As Watts now steps forward, McMillan sends that one long, but Mia can't get onto it. Out of court will be a goal line clearance for Somerville, who throws long for Amadi and a rear bad touch from him. I think Serge will need to just manage the game, choose, what, choose how they use their sets of four wisely choose when they're going to sit back and when, that, when they're going to attack. Yeah, as McMillan steps forward near side for Mia. Drops for Watts. Mia. And they send this one forward but it rolls to Somerville who drops for Espinosa. Pulls it. Still going as Paulson. Near side for Hawkins. Espinosa centers for Amadi. He tries to turn. A good challenge. Still going as Amadi somehow finds a way through, but it's fallen here for the surge. Tracking back hard. Uh, Auckland City. Espinosa now. Two on him. And it's out of court. Will be a kick in for Auckland City. Good strength shown there by Espinosa. As Hawkins gets us back underway, Paulson drives a shot in, but wide of the target. Priest able to watch that one out of court. There's McMillan now. Mia. Watts. Better possession so far in this half for the surge. As Espinosa drives forward and a good save there. Chance here for Paulson, but just wide of the target. Now holding on to possession better than they were at the end of that first half. They are, but they've, they're kind of playing into Auckland City's trap. Um, Auckland City set up, setting up a little bit deeper and then stepping in the press. So as soon as they press, Serge need to move the ball a little quicker. The movement off the ball needs to be a bit quicker to provide those options. As you can see now, here it comes. 
and there you go. And there's a chance here for Watts as he drives the shot in, but Somerville doesn't manage to hold on to that one, but just drops by his side. And Espinosa just walks forward. Three minutes gone in the second half. 3-0 still the scoreline. Auckland City leading here. Means forward Futsal Super League. Plenty of action coming. Women's game up next. Kicking off at 11am between the Power and Papakura. It was a great display of Futsal last night from both those women's sides. So I look forward to that game. Also, if you are in the area, get down here to Bay Park. As Paulson gets away, falls there. Still chance here for Auckland City, but the surge survived. Let's see if they set their trap while well again here, Auckland City. Surge need to move the ball, not take too many touches, but better there. And it's Mia, can't get that one round Espinosa, and it's out of court on the far side, kick in here. As referee Anthony Riley asks Mia to come back a few paces. As Hawkins putting the pressure on Watts here. Drops back for McMillan. And Mia can't keep hold of that one. And it's out of court. Near side kick in for Auckland City. Espinosa can't get round Cooper. As Cooper drives forward here. Chance for Cooper. Can he get the shot away? Does. And a good save there from Somerville. No one else there for the surge. That was a good opportunity. Good yeah. work from Cooper there. Good well to get off a shot and some of them had to make the save. And there's changes coming and Cooper is having to come from the court. Right, Carter, Ramos, Howard. Kawana onto the court for the surge. There's a few changes for Auckland City as well. The Twigs and Amati. Oh no, two Twigs. Pick it. And there's ball forward here for Ramos. Falls to the feet of Twig. And a foul given away there by Ramos. Didn't need to do that. Again, those silly fouls deep in the opposition half may cost them later on. I don't know if you can get further away from the goal where that foul was given away. As the third twig does join us on the court. As Pickin comes near side for twig. As Ramos forces twig out of court. Will be a kick in for Auckland City. Five minutes gone in this first half. Second half, 3-0 the scoreline. Twig. Falls here for Carter, who leaves it behind. Chance here for Twig. Toes, but blocked there by Ramos. Will be a corner. Set-piece opportunity for Auckland City. Yeah, let's see what they can do. And we saw a couple yesterday. Interestingly, Serge have arguably their strongest attacking four on the court at the moment, so let's see what risk they take to try to get back into this game. We saw them initially start to step, step higher defensively as well. As Twig off the post there, was a great thread through there from Pickin. But he couldn't get it on target. I think that one came off the post. As Ramos sends this one forward for Howard, but just a little bit too far away from him. And possession turned over again. Will be a goal line clearance here for Somerville. There's Pickin far side now. Near side for Twig. As they won to it at the back. Carter trying to step forward here. There's Pickin and Twig get a bit confused and this could be a two touch here but well left there by Somerville will be a corner set piece opportunity for the surge chip forward here 
And the shot does come in from Ramos, but it's high and wide off the target. Will be a goal line clearance here for Somerville. And as he drops short for Pickin. And he'll just take the space in the court. Pickin. Drives that one forward for Twig, who tries to turn, does so well, and a chance, and that'll be a foul. Just outside the circle, I think. Is there going to be a card there as well? Because he'd gone past him, he's on his way to goal. I think the discussion is where it was, and a yellow card is shown there for Carter. And it is a penalty. So Thomas Pickin will go to the spot. Bottom left or top right, Mark? I don't know, but all I know is that I'm glad I'm not a goalkeeper in this situation. That ball is quite hard, and you're pretty close in <laughs> the power of pick and shot. It's a place that I wouldn't want to be, but I am picking top right. Top right? He had a 10-metre penalty bottom left, or, or keeper's bottom right. I'm going to go keeper's right, mid-goal. Here's Pickin, Priest in goal, bounces on the spot, and a good finish there from Pickin. As Ronan Nyker calls it correctly, and the keeper again listening to me and going the wrong way. And that's 4 0 here. It's unfortunate. Uh, I think Serge had done really well. Um, I, I think Carter probably had to fail there almost. Not quite sure, but let's see what this 4 do now. As Carter tries to send that one forward, but Twig takes it out of court on the far side. And will be a kick in here for the surge. Eight minutes gone here in the second half. 4 0 the scoreline. I do wonder if the surge will start thinking about an early fifth man. Pick in now. Press coming from the surge as Howard gets on that one but falls here for Somerville. And a foul there, third foul of the half. For the surge with 13 minutes remaining. They've got to stop fouling. And otherwise, this Auckland City side will just keep going. Twig steps inside. Near side for Twig. Foot in there by Howard, sending Pickin back. Be smart, be smart. As Twig will come away with it. And chance here for Pickin. Good slide there from Carter. Gets in the way of that one out of court on this near side kick in for Auckland City. Shot coming in there, but blocked. As Twig works hard, and that'll be a foul. First foul for Auckland City. And again, not the spot really to be giving it away when you're 4 0 up. I think they'd be fine with that, to be fair. <laughs> Ball it up. As Howard, bit of pressure coming on him, sent away here by Ramos, but I just can't get in the game at the moment. Can the surge? Yeah, I like to see the set of four move the ball a bit quicker, moving off the ball a little bit quicker, because they can do it. Just playing into Auckland City's trap. There's Kawana coming forward on Pickin. Uses Twig far side. Twig. Ramos challenges. And ends up on the court. Howard finds Kawana. Tries to turn. Still going is Kawana. A bit eventually loses out there. And it's a chance here on the break for Auckland City. Twig. Good challenge there from Ramos. Had to be made. And a rolling foul here. Second for Auckland City. There's a shot from the kick and coming in there, but picked up by Priest. There's Howard, sends that one long and turned over. Pickin coming forward, still going as Pickin. Far side four, 
And it's in. How did that find a way in? Again, a deflection there, wrong foot in Chris Presley. Couldn't get quite get across. Yeah, I mean, again, this four, I'd like to see them value position a little bit more and create genuine opportunities. I think they're forcing it to, at times, which is understandable, given mm. the pressure. And five to all the score line now. 11 and a half minutes remaining in this match. As Morgan now in a bit of space. And that'll be another foul. Fourth foul for the surge. We talked about it earlier, Mark. That's first foul and deep in the attacking half. Might cost them mm. now. As you get up, up to four fouls, you have to change how you defend as well, which allows Auckland City a bit more space, which you don't want to give them in the best of times. So it will be Ashby Peckham who sits over this one. Margetts next to him. As he steps over at Margetts, drops for Ashby Peckham, but it falls there for Kawana. And it's Howard who comes forward with the chance for Howard. Good, good work there from Somerville. He got out quickly. Did have Carter with him on the far side unmarked, but just couldn't find feet. Good work there from Somerville. Kiwana uses Carter. Good turn from Carter. But that falls for Somerville. As he rolls far side for Padel. Ashby Peckham. Trying to find the feet there of Morgan. Touch on the way through will be a kick in on this near side for Auckland City. As Marquette's shot comes in, but a good save there from Priest. Notice the energy's not there from the surge. This Auckland City side of clinical is a... I guess will be disappointed with that free shot. See his frustration there. We've talked a lot about um, Auckland City with the ball and low percentage without the ball, but I have to commend Auckland City on their defence. Also, the attitude and reaction to break down the play and in transition moments. Oh, I think Margetts will survive with that free shot. It was a foul. It was called. Not sure what for. I think it was out of sight for us, but it might have been a running block. So the third foul for Auckland City. Plenty of fouls in the second half. 10 minutes, 44 remaining. As Lorenzo drops down the line for McMillan. Still going as McMillan gets shot. Oh, what a shot. That's a rocket there from McMillan. Almost out of nothing. And the Surge are finally on the board. Lovely bit of play from Surge there. And a great finish from McMillan. Actually starting with the ball on the left-hand side of the court and finishing it from the right-hand side. Is that the spark that they need, Mark? Well, here we go. We know Futsal's a momentum game. That was some strike there to beat Somerville. And 5 on the scoreline. 10 minutes remaining. Still plenty of time for the surge if they can get back into this. There's Lorenzo. Chance here for me. A good defensive work here from Ashby Peckham. No foul called there by the referee. Lucky there for Auckland City. There's Padel on this near side. Tries to find the feet of Morgan, but it's turned over. Still working as Morgan. It falls back here for McMillan, who steps inside nicely, driving four down to the half. Had Mia on this near side, but just couldn't quite get the right pass. Was unmarked. As Somerville drops for Ashby Peckham. Auckland City holding on to position at the moment. Nuggets far side for Morgan. Padel. Ashby Peckham. Trying to step back inside, but recycles for Padel. Morgan. Ashby Peckham. Margetts in a bit of space. Far side for Padel. This is good position from Auckland City. He's trying to grab at some of the momentum, take this thing out of the game for Surge. 
Death by a thousand passes almost, Mark. Yeah, so time is against the surge. There's a chance here for Morgan. Good save from Paris Scott Big. And Morgan couldn't get it round him. There's a chance for the shot, but Margetts just leaves it there for Ashby Peckham. Pinal dropping back. Ashby Peckham tries to get round, still going. No, it's out of court on this near side. Did get around Mia. Far side for Lorenzo. McMillan, the goal scorer. Watts. And good foot in there from Ashby Peckham. Eight and a half minutes remaining here. 5 1 the scoreline. Auckland City lead over the surge. Ford Futsal Super League. As Ashby Peckham wins that loose ball, gives to Morgan. Can he get the shot away? Good challenge there from Mia tracking back. Watts. Pressure coming from Padel. And it's out of court on the far side. Will be a kick in here for the surge. Lorenzo. Mia Padel coming forward on him. Full press coming here from Auckland City. Now gets steps forward. Mia in a bit of space. Challenge there from Ashby Peckham is good, says the referee. As Watts. He's trying to get that away from Margetts. Mia. Morgan forward on him. Double team coming. Good challenge there from Morgan. Falls for Margetts. Who gives to Padel and they just slow things down. Much better from the surge there though. A lot faster out of the pressure. Margetts. Ashby Peckham. Far side for Padel as he drives into space. Ashby Peckham. Still going is Ashby Peckham. Falls there for Lorenzo. Morgan holds on to that one back heel, but sent away there by McMillan. Will be a kick in here for Auckland City. Seven minutes remaining. Margetts driving forward for Morgan. And as Lorenzo gets on that one, Morgan fighting hard up top. Coming away now is McMillan. Chance here for the surge on the counter, but it's good work there from Ashby Peckham. And they'll be able to reset on defence. Will Auckland City. Watts. Lorenzo, far side for Mia. Just touch got away from him there. Yeah, I think Mia was calling for that ball a lot earlier, maybe two passes earlier. And by the time it got to him, they'd recognise he was free, able to close down that opportunity. There's changes. Ramos, Mia, Carter and Kiwana onto the court for the surge. And centering ball picked up there by Ashby Peckham. But Ramos does well there. Still going as Ashby Peckham. Can he get the shot away? Does, and it's in. <laughs> Fighting hard was Ashby Peckham. Went one-on-one one, one on one with the keeper and made no mistake of it. Yeah, again, sometimes better to put the ball out than risk it. And Auckland City, any mistake you make have been clinical this weekend. And again, punish Serge. Well, I think that really came from an unorganised corner. And had it as Carter driving forward. Out. Still going as Carter. And a good challenge there from Padel. Good recovery from Patel there because Carter turned him inside out. Disappointing for Serge because I thought they were, had the better of it and that's it. And as Carter still fighting, falls back for Ramos, finds the feet of Kiwana. Can he get the shot away? Does so, but just off the foot there of, I think it was Padel. And there's changes coming. Espinosa, Paulson, Amadi. And Hawkins on the court now. Six minutes remaining. As it falls for Amadi, far side now for Paulson. Can't 
keep that one in court though. And it will be a kick in for the surge. Yeah, Serge, you're going to have to take risks now to get back into this game, so you might see a few opportunities either way. As Carter rolls down nicely for me, uh, but just rolls away, and Amadi comes across, but it's an out of court, still a surge ball. Yeah, there's a shot coming in from Kawana, but high of the target. And there's Somerville, just let that one go through. Ramos just check his shoulder, see where Marty is. Paulson, pressure coming now from the surge, but able to break out of that as Espinosa finds a bit of space. Still going as Espinosa, and it will be a kick in on the far side for the surge. Ramos can't get around Amadi. As Amadi tries to put that one through for Hawkins, takes a touch on the way through, out of court. Kick in for Auckland City. Five minutes remaining here. Espinosa, near side for Paulson. Espinosa. There's Hawkins. Can't get on the end of that one. Possession 10 over here. Chance for the surge. Carter. Press coming from Auckland City this time. Carter does well to get round two. Far side now for Mia. Good ball here for Carter, but he just can't keep hold of that. Trying to give that to Kawana first time, I think. Plenty of time to take a touch, and it's Espinosa coming forward with it now. Gives for Hawkins, and great finish there from Hawkins. First time through the leg of the keeper. And that's the seventh in the second of the game for Hawkins. Again, Serge not setting up properly in the press, leaving Espinosa free on the left-hand side. Overload. And to be fair, Hawkins even had the back post passed for a tap-in, but he put it through the keeper's legs. Selfishly puts it through the legs of the keeper. But a great finish at that. As Carter now driving forward. But loses out, and it's with Paulson. Amadi uses Espinosa, and a good save there from Priest. As Amadi wins this one out, gets the shot away, and that is some shot. And it's in the back of the net. And the second of the day for Amadi. And it's now 8 1, the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Yeah, three goals in a short space of time from Auckland City took out whatever momentum or potential momentum Serge could have had. Clinical. 4 20 remaining here. And. This one is at risk of blowing out completely as it's just a bit too easy at the moment for Auckland City as Espinosa gets his second of the day. 9-1 now. So they just need to pick themselves up quickly. Yes. And a timeout called here by the surge. I think what you need to do against this Auckland City side is get the basics right, get your set up right, get your marking right, be switched on from, from breakdown of play and transition moments because they are so sharp and so quick to pick up on those. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, we talked about them in the ball, but if you watch how they get back into position when they lose the ball, you watch how they set up quickly for defensive corners or free kicks or any transition moments, they're so sharp. So any team trying to beat in Auckland City needs to do that as well, if not better, initially to have a chance. And then after that, you really need to have some quality on the ball. Um, it's tough to beat when they're this clinical. Any mistake they make, they you get pounced on there and punished. But that's the basics that need to be done. And it's just the way, almost, the surge, it was 5-1. When they were five goals to nil down when they got their first in. And then four goals, unanswered again by Auckland City, and it's that's what's kind of costing the side at the moment. Clawed their way back into it at the bottom of the barrel, but just no way out at the moment. There's Auckland City finishing. Pickin one, Twig one, Ashby Peckham one, Amadi two, Espinosa two, and Hawkins two. 
six goals coming from this rotation used by coach Nick Downs. Paulson, the only one not to get on the score sheet. I'm sure he's going to try and correct that in this next set, Mark. Yeah, it's Paulson now on the ball near side for Espinosa. As he finds the feet of Amati, he turns. Can't get the shot away, though. As it's McMillan on the ground. He's collected himself back up. Three minutes, 40 remaining here. As Hawkins steps forward. Good challenge from Hawkins. Still going. Their chance here for Kawana, but Espinosa does enough, and that'll be a foul. As he was going for the shot, but Espinosa does well to get his foot in the way there and gets a kick in the back of the leg, and that'll be fifth foul. This might be quite demoralizing for the surge. You're 9-1 down. You're tired. And you look across, and they're about to put on the three twigs and Tom's picking to run you into the ground for the last three minutes. Three and a half minutes remaining here. As Paulson trying to get around Lorenzo, but it's out of court. Has been relentless here from Auckland City. As McMillan near side for Harris. Kawana, this is good, but fortunate touch there from. I think it was Kawana. As Paulson near side here for Hawkins goes back post and. It's McMillan who gets in the way of that one, and it will be a corner here for Auckland City. Again, I'd, li I'd like to see a running block here, and ball come out to Paulson in space to shoot midcourt if they get it to him. Just as like the heavy to recycle the ball. As yeah, Espinosa finds the feet of Amadi, drops back Espinosa, just wide of the target there. That was nice play. <laughs> I was expected that to ripple the back end of that, didn't you, Mark? Well, the way that this four is playing at the moment. Wow. As the surge. See what they can do. With two and a half minutes remaining on the clock. As McMillan steps forward. Challenge there from Espinosa. Three on one here. Good block there from Harris. Had to be made. You have to say young Ollie Harris has had a, a better performance today. Still a bit to learn there, but he, he's improved on his performance like yesterday. And we'll be a kick in on the far side here for the surge. As McMillan sends long here for Harris, but it's out of court and changes will come. It's the three pickings. Well, the three twigs, in fact, and one picking onto the court. No, I lie. Two pickings, and Ashby Peckham, and a pickin. <laughs> You're not quite picking them right at the moment, Mark. Goodness. Thank you, Ronan Nykamp. As it is, Twig. Recycling far side for Peckham. Ashby Peckham. Gets his shot away, but it's wide of the target. Will be a goal line clearance here for Priest. So we have an Ashby Peckham, a Pickham, and two twigs on the court mark. You got that now? I do. Thank you for the clarification. As Howard, he steps forward, far side for Lorenzo. And just a bit of miscommunication there. Harris was almost tracking forward. As Pickham, he steps forward, drops back for twig, far side now for Ashby Peckham. Ashby Peckham. Twig. Good ball down the line for Twig into the middle. And Priest comes forward well there. And it falls for Lorenzo. And the Surge have a chance to break forward. Uh, they just can't find the feet. So it looks like they're going for a more of a 4 0 rotation with this four. Um, so our Twig not on. Either that or. Ashby Peckham has said, I'm the captain, put me on the court. There may be a bit of that, but I doubt it. 
Oh, I'm sure all of these players fighting for court time as Ashby Peckham gets a right-footed shot away and that almost snuck in there. I think that's taking a deflection of Howard. Someone's dipped in at the far, far top corner. Running block, shot, save. That's what you wanted to see, Ronan Nyker. And Priest equal to it. Yeah, I think that time Howard actually read that as well. So, see if... Not this time, let's hope they keep the ball. As Twig dances round, and it's Harris who comes away with it. And no foul. They are on the fifth foul. Uh, the surge. You have to be careful. As Twig steps forward, gives the Twig good ball. And a good block there by Howard, I think it was. Will be a kick in on this near side. 54 seconds remaining. 9 1 the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. And good challenge there from Harris out of court. Will be another kick in. Well, they're scoring quite a few goals at the moment, uh, Auckland City. I think Amadi's on seven for this weekend. It's a volley almost coming there from Pickin. Howard near side for Harris. Press coming out. And they win it to Auckland City as Pickin drives forward. And Howard blocks that one out of court for a corner on the far side. 40 seconds remaining. Good touch from him, but falls there for Howard, and a good strong challenge as Howard can't come away with it. And it's just not coming together there for the surge as Twig in a bit of space on the far side, trying to get around Howard. Still going as Twig drops it back for Pickin. Near side for Ashby Peckham. He steps inside, gives it to Twig. Good turn. Ashby Peckham drops back, but no one's there for Auckland City. They just seem to be winning everything at the moment, Auckland City. As Ashby Peckham can't win that one. Howard. Harris. Still going as Harris. Howard. And it is in the back of the net, but the game has come to an end. No goal, says the referee. We'll give them a halfer on the score sheet. But a clinical performance there from Auckland City, Ronan Nyker. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we can talk about opposition trying to do what they need to do, but Auckland City have been professional clinical in m most, if not all, moments of the game. Tough to beat. Goals for Thomas Pickin, Twig, Ashby Peckham, and Amadi, Espinosa, and Hawkins, two each for them. And the goal scorer was McMillan for the surge. 9-1. Final scoreline here at Trust Power Arena. We'll be back here at 11 a.m. for the women's game. The power taking on Papakura. Until then, stay safe. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow.
believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. Ford, we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years. World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Welcome back to Bay Park Arena here in Tauranga for Game 2 on Day 2 of the Northern Travel Series in the Ford Futsal Super League. We just saw Auckland City have a dominant performance against Bay of Plenty Surge and next up we've got Waibot Power against Papakura City. These teams played last night, Papakura coming away 5-0, so let's hope we see a, a competitive game as we get excited for Game 2. And Bennett and for the Wybot Power. Snowball and goal. Barclay, Simpson, Evans and Machuski round out the starting five. Ronan Nyker joining me in the commentary box. Ronan. G'day Mark, excited for this one. I'm really interested to see how the teams change, especially Wobble Power after yesterday's first leg, shall we say. 5-0 the scoreline was in favour of Papakura City. I'm sure they'll look to come out and put in a strong performance. Ronan, you're writing some notes down. I'm just going to throw over to you. A couple of fans tuning in. Hey, hey, hey. 
Yeah, we've got some fans tuning in all the way from the UK, up late to, to watch this game. Uh, for Futsal Ferns, Dana Manak, Tessa Leong and Hannah Krakman, and Futsal Whites, Kyle Wisniewski, Tom McGowan and Geordie Didford. Hello, hello, hello over there in the UK. Hope you enjoy the game. Probably a slight delay um, getting over to them, but appreciate the support from afar. Always great to have some fans tuning in. And, I mean, Kyle's already messaged me this morning saying how much he loves my hair, so I can't help but feel very grateful. Uh, that's all around the world, basically, now. We've had comments about my hair and how good I'm looking at the moment, so appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of the hair as well, Mark. It's a, it's a statement piece, isn't it? Um, equally, uh, let's have a look at... Um the, the teams coming up, have we, we, we've spoken to the starting lineups we have, right? Yes, we did. You yeah. were too busy writing notes sorry, down sorry. in front of you there, uh, Ronan, which we'll bring it back now to these teams. Yesterday's game, well, it was tight, but 5-0 was the final scoreline, and, and I guess that was good for um, Papakura. But I think the power, they'll look to see if they can get an early goal here today. They look more dangerous than probably that scoreline would suggest. There was a couple of opportunities saved off the line. I think at one stage a shot was almost cleared from the line from one of their own players, but it happens in the game. So they'll come out strong today, I'm sure, as the players slowly getting ready to get on the court. Referees look all set to go. Who are you think the ones to watch for today are Ronan Nykamp? Well, I mean, there's a few, but I'd like to see um, so Eve, Eve Mastewski, Brooke Barkley, um, and the captain. Oh, captain called today is Courtney Stone. Um, Emma Brown as well. Uh, get on the ball a bit for the power. With um, with Papakura, you've got so Maxine Cooper starting, who's well, I got it incorrectly yesterday. Maxine Cooper, golden. Golden boot last last year in November, so let's see how she goes. We've got a couple of different combinations potentially, but yeah, excited for the change. I think Power especially would look, hopefully look to stop that um, that quick start that Papakura had yesterday, which I think was a difference. Yeah, they set up both halves very strong. Came out two early goals in the first half, and then I think it was a, another early goal in the second which just really grounded out for them. It's great action, though, for sure. Absolute credit to the game, both of these teams. Just moving the ball nicely on the court. No real need to just clear it off their line or just boot it away. So that was fantastic. And as the two captains come forward now, it's Abby Venmore for Papakura and Stone for the power. A couple more games coming in to you today at 1pm in a couple of hours. Auckland City will be back on the court, this time taking on the Rapids. And then we'll be back at 5pm today to finish off the weekend with the Rapids taking on the surge. It was a cracker of a first game this weekend. 3-2 the final score there, so one to look forward to. I think in the next game, Auckland City, well, they've just been going from strength to strength in their games. As the players do their final cheers. And we look all set to go here at Trust Power Arena, Ford Futsal Super League. Game two for the women in the Northern Series. And it looks to be Papakura who will get us underway. Expect a strong, fast start from the side. There's the referee. Allows this one to get it underway. And it will be Papakura in position of the ball. There's Bennett. Center court for Cooper. As Wright trying to get around there, but it's out of court, and the referee says power ball. As Simpson gets us back underway. 
fish coming from Papakura as they flick this one forward and Barclay puts pressure on there but well worked there from Bennett and it will be a kick in on the far side for Papakura as a high press coming from the power and it forces the turnover better start today from the power not as quiet as the quick starts we had was it six seconds yesterday Mike oh, yeah. for the first goal yeah it was pretty quick so I'll be happy with the way they've started a good challenge there from Cooper but coming across there is Machewski and that's out of court kicking on this near side for Papakura and it will be Cooper who drops here for Bennett she chips that one in but it's over the crossbar and one thing I did notice yesterday, Ronan, is the head coach of the power. As Wright tries to check that one in, but it's out of court. It has a ball that he bounces throughout the game. I don't know if you picked that up, but... Oh, no, I love it. I actually do that quite a bit, mate. I've never seen you bounce a ball come on, on come the on. side of the football court. Oh, no, so not, not in game. Not in game, no. That's true. As Wright drops back here for Benmore, and she sends that one in towards Bennett, but it's taken. But again, it's Cooper in there battling hard. And eventually wins the kick in off Barclay. As Venmore back to goal, rolls for Cooper, but it's out of court. Will be a kick in again. Near side now for Evans. Right coming forward on her, still going as Evans. And it's going to be Bennett who'll come away with this one, but she can't keep that one in. And as it rolls out of court on this near side, kick in for the power. There's Barclay. Can't keep that one in court. Yeah, I think um, it's early in the game, but... Needs to look at hold on position and, and like we said, create genuine opportunities, not force it too much. Much better start from the power though. Just not able to control position probably as much as they would have liked Papakura. up. It's really the power who are holding it for a bit longer. Near side for Simpson. And there's Bennett. Wins out on that time, drops back for Cooper. And they'll start again with Fenmore near side. Cooper. Bennett. This is better from Papakura. Venmore. Barclay running shuttles on the court. And sent for a chance here for Papakura. Right, gets the shot away, but blocked there by Evans, it was. So we have to be very, very careful and switch on what power. Um, was it fixed? I was losing, lost a marker there, and she was free for a bit. As Bradley rolls for Bennett, but first to it there is Evans, and Cooper again makes the same mistake she made yesterday, puts it down on the wrong line. I have to say, Mark, it is quite confusing. Having a white line so close to the kicking line. Players are used to playing to white lines. The green isn't the easiest to see. Always polite rodent in favour of the players. But no, they are quite close to each other. There's good work there from Machewski. As Barclay puts that one out of court on this near side. Will be a kick in. As the referee reminds of the colour of the line. Benmore far side now for Cooper. This is, I guess, slightly following the same format as yesterday, where there were large periods of the game where both sides were just trying to find a way through. Yeah, definitely more representative of the middle part of the game yesterday. Mm. Although it was the early goals yesterday that got things started as Cooper's pass there. Trying to find the feet of Venmore is out on this near side and changes coming now for the power. Must Pratt and Bloomfield onto the court. As Snowball gives it for Barclay. She walks forward 
far side now for Musprat. Again, changes today for the way that the coach is rotating players. As Bennett can't keep that one on the far side. We had clear sets of four yesterday. But already coach Kieran Matuski trying something different. As Evans drives forward here, good ball to the back post there towards Musprat, but a touch there from Bennett. Good opportunity there for the power. Will be a corner here for the power as it falls back here for Barclay. Gets it in and almost turned around the corner there by Evans. Good opportunity there for the power as change is coming now. It's Gillian, Pretty, James and Williams onto the court for Papakura. up and sent long for Pretty, but can't bring that one under control and it's out of court far side. Well, that's probably the best chance of the game, Ronan. Yeah, lovely little set play there from um, Power. I thought Barclay was quite quite high for a shot, but um, tactical back post pass. There's Gillian now, far side. As she steps forward, one forward and pretty. And she does well to bring that one under control. Drops back for James. Near side now for Williams. Cross court for Gillian. Have to yeah. say I've been impressed with Gillian um, yesterday. So hopefully she brings that form into today. As Papakura holding position nicely. Go back as far as the keeper Bradley. Far side now for Gillian. Bit of space for her as Bloomfield gets in the way of that cross ball for Williams. Muspratt sends this one down the line, but it's out of court. Kick in on the far side for Papakura. Yeah, power again. Just need a value position for her, but they don't want to give Papakura the ball back too easily. There's James on this near side for Williams. James again. It's the way they set up here. Pretty up top. Three of them pretty much back in a line for Papakura. Trying to find that pass forward for Pretty as Williams tries to find the feet there, but Musprat gets a hit on that one. Out of court, far side. Kick in. Yeah, again, power. Just to keep checking their shoulder, looking at where their target is, because... Um, Papakura looking to play them in space. And it will be James to get us back underway. Nil-nil, the scoreline here. Almost five minutes gone in this first half. Limited opportunities as Plainfield can't bring that one under control. And it rolls out of court. Will be a goal line clearance here for Bradley as she drops. For Gillian. Williams. Finds the feet of Pretty. Good turn from her. Far side for Gillian. James. Papakura trying to find a way through here. Finds the feet of Pretty. As Bloomfield battles hard and wins this one. Still going as Bloomfield gets the shot away and it's wide of the target there. The power. Playing smart the moment defensively, I think. Not over committing in the press if they're not set up. As James will step forward with it. Far side now for Gillian. Pretty. Just holds that one up. Uses James in a bit of space as she drives forward. Near side for Williams. Looks to step down the line but cuts back in. Gives it centre court for Pretty. Who then gives it to James and that pass goes out of court. There's Stone now. Gets around pretty. Still going as Stone. Uses McCormick. Back for Muspratt. Far side for Bloomfield. Good from the power. Stone. Looks to get round pretty, but out of court. Will be a kick in on this near side. Good crowd in today here at Trust Power Arena. Still two games to go today. Williams. Space for her to step forward. Uses James on the far side. 
Williams drops for Gillian. Near side for James. Straight to McCormick as she drives forward. Heavy touch, though, as Muspratt comes away with it. McCormick. Stone does well to keep that in. Driving forward to Stone. Ball to the back post. Shot is wide, but no one there for the power. Interestingly, power setting up in a, in a wide press. Papakura got to three, but happy to just watch them play in front, so not necessarily pressing. There's time. Almost seven minutes gone in this first half. Nil nil, still the score line. No fouls for either side. As Williams comes near side for James down the line. That's a good ball. As Musbury comes across and just boots that one out of court. Good cover defence there from Russ Pratt. Just the opposite flanker for Wiber Power. Just needs to be recognised that and cover that target on the back post. As Williams places it on the green line. A shot comes in from Gillian. And that's out of court. Snowball. Drops here for Muspratt. She goes long. James gets a foot in the way, but coming forward to Stone. But she can't keep that in court. And it will be a kick in on this near side, just on the halfway line. As Williams tries to find the feet there of Pretty, but falls here for Bloomfield. She drives forward. And James gets on that one. Coming forward now. Williams goes for the shot. And a good option in the end, but wide of the target. Yeah, a good option from Williams there. The pass was a bit slow, so she had to take it early because um, Musbert was coming across the block. There's Carter onto the court. Sends that one forward for Barclay. Near side down for Stone. Chance here for the power. Driving forward to Stone. Chance and a good save in the end. Can she finish? No! What an opportunity there for the power. Well... Credit Gillian with the save there. But Carter just couldn't find a way through. And two good opportunities now for the power. Yeah, lovely play out of the wide press there. Gillian doing some great work defensively to help her keep out. Yeah, it's near side now for James as she does well to keep this in. Down the line for Pretty. And Stone tracking back. Gets on to that one. And it will eventually be brought under here by Pretty. Far side for Gillian. Williams. Space for her to turn. Drops down the line here for Pretty, but little touch on the way through as changes made here. Barroso. Anthony. Reddy. And Bremner onto the court. It's going to be good to see this four data. Four that started really strongly yesterday third set on this time round. Again, keep an eye out for Hannah Reddy, middle of the court. As Anthony gets a shot in, and it falls here for Barclay. Reddy tracking back nicely. Bremner now, bit of space for her. Uses Reddy, uses her strength, and will win the kick-in. A few golden boot winners on this Papakura side. There's Anthony in a bit of space near side now for Bremner. As forcing the error out of court on this near side, kicking for the power. 11 and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Nil nil, still the scoreline. No fouls for either side. Just does make you wonder yesterday if there was a bit of nerves in it for the power. Kind of growing into this competition. As Bremner keeps that one in. Far side for Barroso. Anthony tries to pay ready down the line. Then will roll out of court for a clearance. Almost stalemate at the moment, Ronan. Well, again, like we said, it's like the middle middle part of the game yesterday. Both teams not like not wanting to give away too much, and equally, power started a lot better than they did in the first game. 
as McCormick down the line here for Barclay. She tries to get around Anthony. Bit of space for Anthony and move forward now. She drives it to the half. Users ready on the far side. Tracking back on defence is the power. And they'll have to recycle here Will Papakura. Barroso near side for Bremner. Finds the feet of Reddy. This is where she's dangerous if she can turn. As Barroso trying to find the feet of Anthony on the far side. Out of court. Kick in now for the power. As change is coming. Martinson onto the court. Replacing the captain Stone. I think that's where the opportunity for Papakura potential will come. Um, in the breakdown of play, Power seemed to be drawn to the play on the ball and leaving players free out wide, so keep an eye on that for later on. There's Martinson, first touch for her. Carter. Martinson again. Ford here for Barclay. Martinson. Carter. It turns over as Anthony picks up the loose ball. Carter in a bit of space now, though, as she drives the shot into Anthony out of court on the far side. There's a shot blocked there. Interestingly, power taking that kick in with only three players on the court. Did you see that? Very dangerous in transition if they lost the ball. As Barclay steps over that one, Martinson drives it in, saved there from Bradley. As Barroso gets that one away, full here for Bremner as she drives into the half. Track back there by Machuski. As Anthony can step forward, gives to the feet of Reddy, drops back for Bremner. Anthony unmarked down the line. Chance here for Papakura. And she wins the corner. Set piece opportunity here for Papakura. As Barroso. You saw it there again, Mark. Breakdown and play. Power get drawn to the ball and leaving. In that instance, Chevy Anthony free. So they need to switch on to that because they may pay the price later on. Counter gives for Martinson. And a bit of confusion there between Matuski and Martinson. So it is out of court. Will be a kick in here for Papakura. Anthony, shot comes in, but wide of the target. Yes. Machuski far side down for Martinson. She can't get round Barroso. Carter. Drops back for Machuski. Far side for Martinson. She steps forward. Still going. As Carter can't keep that one in court. Will be a kick in here for Papakura. Coach Marvi can have the tactics board out there. Let's look let's see, to see what he tries to change with the next set. As Anthony sends this one long here, finds the feet of Reddy. Does well to hold that up. And can't get it past Martinson. No, nope. that was Machuski. Far side now for Barroso. Stepping forward as Machuski. Shot comes in, but wide of the target. Ooh. Wow. There's changes. Dangerous <laughs> substitutions yeah. there. There's Reddy in a bit of space while they were making the substitutions. There's, I think I did see a, a bib get thrown there, Ronan, and we know that's a big no-no. And the futsal substitution is Bloomfield here. Gets on that one but can't get past Bremner. It falls back for Bradley. And they're poking this press with Barroso near side here. Falls for Bloomfield. Chance here, three on one, four. As don't know how much ball that was, but no foul called by the referee. And transitions again. While the power have had a few opportunities, they just need to play the ball a little bit quicker, whether it's a pass or a shot. Papakura have done really well to get back and either win their one-on-one -on -one battle or get back in defence. 
Yeah, I think that one there where Bloomfield had the space going forward, there was three of them forward for the power, but they, the two of them almost checked their runs and didn't want to move forward. So it shows that the way this game has been played at the moment, neither side really willing to push too hard for that goal. That's a good tight battle out there. Here's Anthony near side for Bremner. Seven and a half minutes remaining here. Barroso. Anthony. Far side for Bremner. Down the line for Reddy. Chance here. And just wide of the target again as well. Barroso arriving back post, but just a little bit too late for that one. I'm not sure who we need to score first here, Mark, to, to maybe, like, change it up a bit. As Evans misses out there. Substitution's coming here from Coach Eakins. All right, let's see what they do here. Like I mentioned earlier, Pop Curry Coach Marv Eakins had a tactics board out. And has been at far side for Ben Moore. Is that one out of court? And changes coming now for the power. See Payne onto the court for the first time. Better time to substitute then. There's Payne now in position. Heavily strapped knee. There's pressure coming. There's Venmore. Battles hard on that far side. Doesn't want to go out, does the ball. Could work there from Payne to jockey that out of court. Will be a clearance here as Snowball rolls for Simpson. She steps forward. Payne leaves that one behind. Chance here for Venmore. One on one with the keeper and finishes that beautifully. The mistake from Payne. Just a heavy touch. And Venmore capitalises and it's 1 0 here. Yeah, that'll be disappointing for power. Came from nothing really, but Papakura are punishing first mistake. Six and a half minutes remaining in this first half. 1 0 the scoreline now. As referee hadn't blown his whistle, but we're back underway. Pain now. Near side for Simpson. Finds the feet of Bloomfield. Drops that one forward, but Evans, I think it was, couldn't get around. Good battling there between Cooper and Bloomfield. As they come together again, good wee battle there. Bennett, shot comes in, good save at the end from Snowball. Unsighted. Bit of something in this game, Rodan. Yeah, I think um, they'll force power to commit a bit more. It, I think what they're doing at the moment is a smart, fortunately, that punish for that mistake. Yeah, it's been at far side for Venmore. Right. Cooper. Oh, it is Bennett. Right. Now Cooper. Ben Moore. Good ball. Bit of space. Chips that one in. A good save there from Snowball. It's a danger with following you, man. You get disorganised if you're not doing it properly. They had a good turn there from Evans. Finds the feet off Bloomfield. Drops back here for Simpson. Near side for Payne. But turned over. And happy just to sit back here. Ah, the power as it's sent forward there for Bennett, but she can't bring that one under control. Out of court, four minutes 42 remaining. 1 0 the scoreline. Stone and Barclay back onto the court. Payne trying to find the feet of Barclay, but it's Cooper who will come away with it. Far side. As it's dropped back here for Venmore. 
There's Cooper. Sits on the court, gets back up. Near side now for Wright. Drives the ball in and it's dangerous. Wasn't collected there by Snowball, but will be a corner set piece opportunity here for Papakura. Cooper in a bit of space. Uses Ben Moore, shot comes in, good save. Chance here for Wright, but cleared away there by Payne. And another corner here for Papakura. Power going to be switched on to that second option, second runner. I think they're, they're covering the first first runner, but the second one is free. Oh. Yeah, the shot comes in here, back post, but blocked in another chance, and good save there by Snowball. I thought that was going to find a way in, but it didn't. So the power survived. Still here for Papakura as Cooper drives that shot on back post towards Bennett. She's trying to turn around, but it's going to have to come back as far as Cooper, and it will be out of court far side. Good challenge there from Barclay. Benmore now drives that in. Right, that's easy pickings for Snowball. Papakura definitely stepping up the pressure now. Why would I have to try and get it up on the game again after conceding that goal? As Stone puts that one into the centre of the court for Bennett. She steps over once and a shot comes in, but again, Snowball equal to it. Nice footwork there from Bennett. Sent forward here. Good touch there from Barclay. But Venmore able to put that out of court. Reset. Kick in here for the power. Far side. Drops back here for Stone. Barclay. Stone again. Good chance to shoot here, but wide of the target. Or was that a pass? Out of court kick in on the far side. There's Cooper. Sends this one long. As Wright comes back to collect, Bennett drops for Venmore. Three and a half minutes remaining. Bennett walking forward, Venmore. Drives to find the feet of Wright, but and throw as far as the keeper. Simpson uses Stone on the far side. Barclay, good ball there for Stone. Chance here for Papakura. Simpson can't hit the target. What an opportunity that was for the power. And Simpson coming through one on one with the keeper and just can't hit the target. Lovely play there from Power. Sure, if she looked at it again, she's probably going to hit that back post because we play on the back post running in. Yes, Cooper does well to keep that in right now. Chance for Cooper. One on one. Has right. And a good save there from Snowball. Still there, though, as Barclay gets a foot on that one. And it will be out of court on this near side. Kick in for the power it is. Dangerous setup there in the wide press. You can't allow the ball down the line because that happens. And Brown onto the court for the power. As Carter plays that one for Barclay, near side here for Stone. Right coming across. Carter can't find Stone. And change is coming now. Pretty James. Gillian and Williams onto the court. There's James, near side for Gillian. Uses Williams on the far side. She tries to get that through, but it falls again there for Williams. Battling hard is pretty, and she'll bring that under control. Drops back for Gillian. No pressure in the half. As Gillian will step forward, near side for Williams. James. Finds the feet of Pretty. Drops back for Gillian. Coming forward now. Uh, Papakura, but it falls here for the power. And it's a turnover again. James in a bit of space. Drops back for Gillian. Power need to reorganise. As Williams drives that shot on Pretty. Gets a touch on that. Handball. No, says the referee. Good challenge there from Snowball. As it's an open goal. Snowball was too busy worrying about the challenge there on Pretty. And left the goal open. And James... 
took the opportunity, but wide of the target. And Snowball throws long here. As Brown can't bring that under control. Falls again here for Papakura. Gillian. Center court. Uses James. Trying to find that pass through there for Pretty. But it's Barclay who gets a touch on it. Still with Papakura though. Williams now. She drives a shot on back post. That snowball collects that one. Carter plays Stone. Barclay. Just over a minute remaining here in this first half. 1 0 the scoreline in favour of Papakura. It's good battling there. And it's out of court on this near side. Pretty with the challenge. Brown can't use a stone. Far side now for Carter. Good challenge there by Pretty. Back as far as Snowball. Papakura definitely stepping up their pressure on the ball. So Powell going to have to move the ball and move off the ball a lot quicker. As Pretty misses the challenge there. Good one here from Brown. Still going as Brown, but it's Williams still here for Brown. But Barclay called into action as Gillian. Gets on that one. Williams now far side for Gillian. Can she chase this one down? No. Out of court, far side. Coach Marv Eakins there recognising the overload, yelling go, go, go with a wide player off the court behind the goal. 27 seconds remaining. 1-0 the scoreline. One goal for Abby Venmore. Papa Curtis City lead here over the wide bop power. And there's a good challenge again from Pretty, but can't win possession of the ball. Gillian now intercepts the pass. Pretty. That one off Barclay. Will be a kick in on the far side here. Nine seconds remaining in this first half. Gillian trying to find the feet there of Pretty. Falls here for Brown. Gillian again though wins it back. Chance for Gillian. Gets a shot away. Blocked there by Barclay. Still going. And that'll do it here for the first half. Papakura. We'll take a one goal to nil lead into the break. We'll be back here in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style, and capability you know, and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be.
Zine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years. Yeah, I thought good from both teams. Uh, power again, just making one mistake and getting punished for it. So I'd like to see who's going to take the game with the scruff of the neck for the power team and, like, and say, hey, I'm going to score a goal. I'll also be interested to hear some of the opinions of our international viewers in the UK. So a message in. You've got my number. You've got Mark's number. Give us your thoughts. I'll let you deal with that admin, Ronan. bit too much for me as the referees look all set to go, and it will be the power to get us back underway. Just that one mistake, really, in the first half. And it was pounced on by Papakura. And they do turn it over here at Williams. And at the back of the court, uses Gillian. Far side now for James. She flicks down the line, and Gillian will try and chase that one in, but out of court. And it will be a goal line clearance here for Snowball. Already we see Papakura stepping up the tempo in and out of position, so... As Muspratt does well to get round Williams there, still going as Muspratt uses Bloomfield. And she's still going, fakes to shoot there. And out of court on this near side will be a kick in for Papakura. As Pretty sits up top. James, she just walks it forward, far side for Williams. Brings centre court, Gillian. James. Williams. No way through at the moment, a good challenge there from Muspratt. Falls back for Gillian. They're able to get away from it here as they go back to Milligan. In goal. Change at half time there. Same as yesterday from coach Marvin Eakins. As Mills Evans trying to drive down the line. As Milligan loads long for Pretty. Good challenge there from Machuski as Bloomfield charging forward. And wins the kick in on this near side. Good play there from Bloomfield. Yeah, Lassie Bloomfield look, looks up for it in this half. As Muspratt drops back, but straight to Pretty. And James under a bit of pressure here. And it's just off Pretty out of court. Kick in on this near side. Muspratt steps forward, gets the shot away, but... It's off Gillian, and will be a corner. Chance for a set piece here for the power. 
still chasing their first goal of the tournament. Steps over Muspratt. Shot is wide of the target. Mischewski there as well had just checked off the back post. So if Muspratt had seen that, could have played her. As Milligan throws long here for Pretty. He does well to control that. As Muspratt has no choice really but to clear that one away. Will be a kick in just on the halfway line here for Papakura. James, far side for Williams. Gillian, forward here for Williams, but a heavy touch from her. Good challenge in the end, though, as it falls to James. Pretty. And Machuski able to clear that one out of court, far side. Recycling bin doesn't do the job. So we will get a fresh ball. As Williams plays near side for James. Ball through there for Gillian, but Evans gets a touch on that. And it will be Muspratt driving forward. Good run here from Muspratt. Finds the feet of Bloomfield. Chance here for Bloomfield, but Williams in good position. Still going as Bloomfield. Near side for Matuski. Evans steps around one, gets the shot away. It's in! Oh, what a shot! Can you believe it? From great distance there, Evans just steps onto her right. And top corner, 1-1 one, one the scoreline. What a goal. I wasn't expecting a shot there. She'd been the first player. I thought she was going to play the overload, but nope, back to self and put up top bins, Mark. Wow, what a way to score the first goal of the season for the power. And we have a game on here. 1-1 one, one the scoreline. Three minutes gone in this second half. How can Papakura respond as Gillian has a shot, but that's wide of the target. We asked the question, who from Powell's going to step up and grab the game by the scruff of the neck? And Jamie Evans, if that's not taking the game by the scruff of the neck, I don't know what is. What a shot. As Muspratt trying to keep that one in court, but hit it out. Will be a kick in. I think the energy Bloomfield's bringing for the power in this half is really helping. As yeah. you said, Ronit, she looks up for it. Yeah, I think both Bloomfield and Muspratt are taking a lot of... Um, doing a lot of work for the team and giving a lot of energy allowing the other teams to, to play like to see the reaction from both teams now both Papakura and Power sometimes it takes a goal to bring a game to life and Evans gets on the loose ball James tracking back across there and that will be a kick in for the Power I don't think they'll be leaving Lisa Evans to shoot again anytime soon oh Lisa Evans, Jamie Evans sorry as Bloomfield shapes to shoot here, gets around the line. Still going as Bloomfield. And it's out of court. Will be a kick in here for Papakura as changes come. Anthony, Reddy, Barroso and Bremner onto the court. Wow. What has this game got left in it? As Bremner near side for Barroso trying to find that pass through there for Reddy but it's out of court will be a goal line clearance here for Snowball there's changes coming Carter back onto the court replacing Muspratt and a good work there from Barroso to break that play down that pass was on there for Bloomfield Will be a kick in for Papakura. Anthony. Near side for Bremner. Goes to the feet of Reddy. What can she do from here? Drops it back and a good save there from Snowball. Still here for Reddy, but wide of the target. Good opportunity there for Papakura. Bremner, definitely one of those dangerous players for Papakura who can. Beat her man, player 1v1, creating the opportunity there. As Evans steps back inside, near side here for Carter. And she tries to flick down the line there for Barclay. Anthony uses Barroso. Press coming here as Barclay. 
Gets a foot in the way of that one. Might be a foul there. Yes, it is. And again, some of these fouls today being given away in silly positions. No need to make that as Anthony goes long here for Reddy. And she does want to bring that under control, but she's by herself. Three players back here for the power. Still going is Reddy. And centers it, but a great work there from Snowball. And she just reaches out to grab that one. Near side for Evans. Carter. Good turn there by Evans, and that'll be a foul. So one foul each now. Near side for Carter. Evans. Carter. Trying to play the feet of Barclay. But it ends up out of court, far side. Kind of came to life there for a bit, Ronan, and back to, I guess, that mid part of the game again. Yeah, it was interesting. Um Immediately after the goal, Marvie can try to take the tempo out of the game and ask them to slow it down, which, which did end up slowing the game down. Get back into this set play, and now we're back to square one almost. And Stone back onto the court. It's just when this happens, it's just when Papakura just give the ball away a little bit more to the power and they're able to build a bit of pressure from possession I think I'd prefer to see them keep that tempo high are you talking about Papakura or you Papakura yeah yeah I think again like you mentioned earlier I think both teams are not wa wanting to give away too much and, and playing it a, a little bit safer at times I think I also think about it from the point of view of the neutral. Wanting to see some goals. But both teams working hard as changes coming now. For Papakura, Cooper, Venmore, Wright, and Bennett onto the court. My only concern here for the power is that they need to be switched on. In, in every phase, as soon as they drop a play or miss their marker, Papakura are likely to punish them. At the moment, it's quite even. See, the way that I think Bloomfield's playing a bigger part in this game, she's the dangerous player for the power. As they look to go long for her, and... It's a wee touch on that, but just too much, and it's out of court on this near side. Kick in for Papakura. Almost seven minutes gone in the second half. There's Cooper. Mistake. Good ball here for... Almost there for Bloomfield, but just couldn't bring it under control as Milligan throws long here for right, but she can't keep that in. Out of court, far side. Bit of a chess match here. Very much so, very much so. Stone. And turned over again here. Well, Simpson this time, he couldn't keep that one in his. Cooper goes down the line, but cleared away there by Stone out of court. Kicking far side now for Papakura as Venmore. Near side for Wright. Cooper. Steps forward, still going as Cooper. Bit of space for her, gets a shot away, but Stone is first to that. Bloomfield down here for Stone. Chance. 
Yeah, that just goes there to Wright, who's able to clear it away. And that will be a kick in here for Papakura. Good opportunity there for the power. Back for Cooper. Bloomfield stepping forward on her, uses Venmore. Far side here for Wright as she manages to bring that one in control. Bennett stepping forward, trying to get around Bloomfield. A good challenge there from Simpson as Bloomfield still working. Good from Bloomfield, back for Stone. Uses Bloomfield again as she charges down the line. Still going as Bloomfield. Good run, and that'll be a foul. No. Okay. Mark has to just wait for the call. Um, you commented earlier about not referring to referees' decisions. Well, I don't know how you kick a player there and then claim that it was ball. Anyway, shot comes in, a good save there from Milligan. Had to be made. Obviously... I saw something completely different there. Yeah, I think you um, you uh, didn't quite have the right line of sight. Right. So, yeah, just in front of me. I'm not going to comment on my opinion on that tackle. <laughs> well, the kicking did go the way of the power. So they're obviously saying that it was all ball. There's a little touch. They hit it on. <sighs> Milligan had to save that one. Almost chipped there. There's good work again there from McCormick. Right, I want to see Papakura get to work now. They've kind of had a bit of broken play. You need to get back into their passing sequence rotation. Their movement is a lot more static now. They had a lot more joy when they were playing uh, a more fluid game. At the moment, I'd say power and ascendancy because of that. Papakura mm -hmm. allowing them to play and power taking advantage. There's, here come the power. McCormick trying to get a pound. Cooper, and she steps forward. Good challenge there in the end. And still going as McCormick as she's bundled off the ball. And a bit of feeling out there. As Stone comes for a break, replaced by the goal scorer Evans. Martinson far side now for Carter. Martinson again for Bloomfield. Still going as Bloomfield. Good ball forward here for Martinson. Can she get the shot away? Does, but it just rolls there to Milligan. Couldn't get that under control quite quickly enough to get a clean shot off. As Cooper comes forward now, near side for Venmore. Good touch there by Power. Out of court on this near side. Venmore. Near side for Bennett. Venmore. Just going through the motions at the moment, really. There's a few hitters here. Venmore chips that one in. And good hands there from Snowball. And she rolls for Martinson, far side. Sent forward here for Bloomfield, but it's off Venmore. Will be a kick in for the power. No shot. no shots here. McCormick jogs after that one. How much time we got left, Mark? Ten minutes remaining. Not quite squeaky bum time, but we're getting there. Yes. Could be some finish here as Bloomfield gets the shot away, but. Straight at the keeper, and Milligan will throw long here. Chance for Cooper. Can she bring this one down? And a great challenge there. Can get a shot away. Oh, goodness me. Perfect example there. I mentioned earlier, Weibel Power switching off, allowing Papakura that opportunity. Oh, that was a good break out and play. Good run forward there by Cooper. And brave goalkeeping from Snowball. That was a follow-up there from Bennett. That oh, was oh. blocked. Power quite deep here. 
as it's out of court. Will be a kick in again. Bennett, chance to shoot. Blocked there by Martinson. Still going as Bennett. And she tries to get around Martinson. And that will be out of court. Kick in on this near side for Papakura. As Venmore almost gets the wrong line. Right. Chips this one in. But that's easy for Snowball. And she rolls for Martinson. As almost the timeout sheet handed to the commentary box. Probably not much use. And there's good battling there from Evans. Drops it back as far as Martinson. Bloomfield. Gets the shot away, but blocked there. Falls back for Evans. Her shot blocked there. And that will be out of court. The timeout has been called. Chance for everyone to catch their breaths. Nine minutes remaining here. 1 1 the score line. What do you think the coach will be discussing here, Ronan? Uh, Messaging is going to be really important, I think. Um, good opportunity for Papakura to reset a little bit, I think. They're playing into Waiwa Power's hands there. Uh, for Coach Wasiewski, I think he's he's happy with what he's saying, but I hope he's, he talks to them about switching on in the breakdown and play because while they're doing really well on the ball, they don't want to give away too many easy opportunities. Um, the other one is Lossie Bloomfield's doing a lot of work for them. They just need to get closer to her and help her one-twos or even follow up her shots um, just to, you know, to benefit from that momentum, I'd say. There's the timeout coming to an end here at Trust Power Arena. 1-1 the scoreline. Was 5-0 yesterday to Papakura, so a lot tighter today. And the first goal of the campaign for the power scored by Jamie Evans. And some strike as well. So we're back underway here. Nine minutes remaining. Martinson, good block there by Pretty. Still going as Madison though. Williams comes forward on that, drops for James. And they'll start again from the back here. Will Papakura. James. Back for Williams. Near side for Gillian. She sends that one forward but can't find the feet of Pretty. And it's Machuski who gets a foot on that. And it's Pretty now. Brings this one under control. Drops for Williams. Bit of space now for her to drive forward. Uses the feet of Gillian. But the double team coming in and Evans comes away with it. And it falls here for Barclay. Bit of space for her. Still going. And that will be a kick in for Papakura on this near side. James. Far side for Gillian. Finds the peep of Pretty, but it's Machuski there. Out of court, far side. Power line, Papakura to find Pretty and target too easily at the moment. They need to try and close off that channel. As Gillian drives the shot in, but wide of the target. Will be a clearance here for Snowball. Press coming from Papakura. There's Martinson. Good pass through there for Barclay. Out of court, far side from James. Will be a kick in for the power. Eight minutes remaining here. 1 1 the scoreline. Tight game. As Evans can't bring that one under control, it will roll out of court. There's Papakura. Get into their work near side for Williams. Gillian. Uses James. Williams. Gillian. Pressure coming now from the power and they force that error. That's good defensive work there. Machuski. Very good. Good decision there. Williams was limited option. The opposite flanker had him cycled round. Power win the ball back. There's Martinson, uses Barclay on the far side. As James gets a foot in the way there. Oh, 
Neither side really willing to give an inch at the moment. Powell smiles at the moment, enjoying their footsteps on the court, happy with the way things are going. Well, I do like to see that when people enjoy themselves out on the court. As Evans now, bit of space for her, tries to find the feet back post of Madison. But it will roll through to Milligan. And Papakura, they'll come again. Lovely footwork from Evans there, just unable to find the follow-up play on the back post. Yeah, as Williams trying to find the feet there of Gillian. But out of court, foot in the way there by Barclay. Williams now. Gillian, far side for James. She steps forward, uses Williams on the near side. Recycling the ball, but no way through at the moment for Papakura. As James moves forward, drops back for Williams. Making their way forward now, but that pass from Williams through. And it's out of court. Change is coming now for the power. The captain Stone back onto the court as well as Payne. And this falls for James. Chance for her to shoot does, but it's wide of the target. Pony to get the set up right out of the press early. And Snowball throws long here. And Machuski can't keep that in. And it's out of court. Kick in for Papakura. Six minutes, 20 remaining here. 1-1 one, one, still the scoreline. Forward Futsal Super League at Trust Power Arena. Game two of the weekend for these two sides. As Gillian sends this one long for Pretty. Good touch from her. Challenge coming from Payne, forcing her back, but still going as Pretty. Drops back for James. Uses Gillian. Pretty. Gillian. Williams. Finding the feet of James eventually. Still going as James. Can she get the shot away? Doesn't need to. Still going, James. And it's in. I think that's off Stone. But it was a good run there from James. And it's 2 1 here in favour of Papakura. Mentioned earlier, the ball into the target. In that instance, Ella James, too easy. But credit to her, great work from her to create that opportunity. And I think it was an own goal. Well, let's see how they can respond here. Here we go. There's Payne driving forward. Uh, it will be a keeper's ball as Milligan sees that one out. And she throws long here for Pretty. Good touch there from Pretty. She uses James on the far side. Gillian. Williams. Five minutes remaining here. 2-1 now in favour of Papakura. Pretty. Drives a shot in. A few touches there, but Stone gets to it first. Still here for Papakura. Pretty fighting hard. Still going as Pretty. And good challenge there from Snowball. And cleared away by Barclay in the end. Almost cleared out. <laughs> cleared it into the far side referee. Yeah, as Gillian drops here for pretty shot comes in, but blocked there by Carter. Again, blocked. Falls here for Stone. James coming forward on her, still going as Stone. Chance here for the power. And that one just chipped in. Running back close was Barclay. And as substitution comes, Bloomfield back onto the court. Back post opportunity was on there. It was. And sent in there. Chance here for Carter, but just can't bring that under control. And it will be a kick in on the far side as changes come. Anthony Cooper. Ready. And... Bremner onto the court. Gonna be an intelligent press from power here. Yeah, sent long here for Reddy. She just holds it up, drops it off for Anthony, and Stone gets in the way of that one. Bloomfield. Back for Stone. Near side for 
Stone on the pass from Carter. Payne back for Stone. Carter. Good pressure there from Papakura, but Cooper can't keep that one in. Too static out of the press there, Power. And that one hits straight at Cooper. Chance here for Reddy in a bit of space. Uses the feet of Cooper back across the face of the goal. And wow. Golden opportunity there for Bremner. As the shot comes in, but it's flashed across the face of goal. And the power survive. Four minutes remaining. Muspratt onto the court. Good pressure here from Cooper. Yeah, too static from power at the moment trying to play out of the press. They've got to move the ball. They've got to get runners in to take defenders away. The moment they're playing into Papakura's press. As Anthony drives the shot in, but blocked there by Carter. Muspratt can't get the challenge. Falls here for Cooper, but will be a corner ball. As Cooper finds the feet of Anthony. Muspratt putting pressure on her. Have to go back as far as Milligan. Pressing the goalkeeper. Here they come. There's Cooper. Near side now for Bremner. Good work there from Papakura. Good ball there for Reddy. She turns. Can she shoot? Yes. And great finish there from Reddy. That's where she's most dangerous. And Papakura get another one. And it's three goals to one. Yeah, I think they all came from good composure from Chivy Anthony under pressure. Instead of booting the ball, looked up, kept position. And from that position, created that opportunity and scored a goal. Great goal there from here already. Three minutes remaining here. 3-1 the scoreline now. Just getting away from the power. And there's Musprat. Moves this one forward as far as Bloomfield, but just gets away from there, her there. Out of court, far side kick in now for Papakura. Just game management now really for Papakura. Three goal to one lead. Anthony. Far side for Bremner. As that pass can't find its way past Carter. And there's Bloomfield coming forward here on Cooper. Good strength there from Cooper. But they do turn position over here as Muspratt trying to find the feet there of Bloomfield, but Bremner does well. Out of court, kicking on this near side for the power. Two minutes, 27 remaining. Bloomfield searching back post, but it is Bremner that comes away with it as Cooper drops for Anthony. Near side now for Cooper. Trying to find the feet there of Reddy as Cooper does well. Muspratt going for the nutmeg. Still going out and foul called there by the referee. As Anthony takes it quickly. Bremner forward here for Reddy. Back and good block there. Again too easy. They've left that channel into the target wide open. They're going to get, keep getting punished if they don't address that. That's where Reddy's dangerous as we tick under two minutes remaining here as the shot comes in. Oh, it's a little more of a chip cross. And it's blocked. Will be a corner ball here. For Papakura. Anthony back for Bremner. Centred there for Reddy. She does well to get a hit on it. And Snowball throws long. Anthony steps in front. And eventually out of court, far side. Well, it's been an entertaining game. But the power just not able to take their chances. I'm sure they'll grow into this competition. And there's Bloomfield unable to bring that one under control. Yeah, the combinations, decision making and, and um, execution in the final third. 
they can improve that, they'll be very dangerous. As Cooper unable to keep that one out of court far side. As Stone back onto the court. As Muspratt trying to find the feet there of Bloomfield, but straight out of court. And Milligan throws long here for Reddy, but that'll be straight to Snowball. As she drops here for Evans. Still going as Evans. And a good challenge there from Bremner out of court, just on the halfway line. One minute, ten remaining. A goal here from the power would make things interesting. Got to do it quickly, though. As Reddy now gets on that loose ball near side here for Bremner. Does well to keep that in. A good covering there from Evans, and eventually... No. Kick in for Papakura. Coach Mastuski bouncing the ball when he doesn't agree with the decision. As Cooper trying to step inside here. Gets to the feet of Reddy. She goes back as far as Anthony. Far side now for Cooper. Trying to get around Muspratt. A good challenge from her. 45 seconds remaining. As Anthony drives a shot on Muspratt. Blocks that. Another kick in for Papakura. Corner in fact. As back as far as Anthony, her shot is high. And Snowball will drop here for Muspratt. Near side for Bloomfield. What can she do? Good challenge there from Bremner. Muspratt. Far side for Stone. And Evans gets the shot away and could save in the end there. Generated some power on that one, did Evans? Yeah. Evans trying to put it in the top bins again. And Milligan equal to it. And a chance here for Muspratt, but... Chipped away. And will be a ball with Milligan. 20 seconds remaining. They go long here for Reddy. Good challenge there from Muspratt. Well, good improvement from the power. I'm sure they'll grow into this competition. First two games. There's that one. There's a... No. It's a corner. With nine seconds remaining here. Papakura has a shot coming in and it's in. Great finish there from Anthony. Yeah, she's had a few from there. I was wondering what she, if she's going to just try and put it on target this time rather than going for power. Does it well. 4 1 the scoreline. The power are in this for quite some time. There's Muspratt driving forward here. And that'll do it here. Women's Forward Futsal Super League. Papakura make it two from two over the power. 4-1 winners in this game. We're back here at 1pm for the men's competition. Auckland City taking on the Waikato Rapids. Until then, stay safe. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years.
Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust, for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, whaka mana. Partnerships, mana natahi. Pathways, ara. And tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Anyway, Hockey Mai, welcome back here to Trust Power Arena in Tauranga for day two of the Northern Series of this Ford Futsal Super League. We've just had the women's teams play 4 1 win there for Papakura over the Power. A tight game, 1 1 for a long period of the game, but Papakura pulling away. Next up, we have Auckland City's final game of the weekend taking on the Rapids. They'll be looking to make it a clean sweep this weekend, four from four. They got the better of the Rapids yesterday, so they'll be looking to repeat that. But for the Rapids, they'll be looking to bounce back before they have their final game this evening at 5 p.m. My name's Mark Matsis, and I'll be calling you through the action for today. Let's take a chance to have a look at the starting lineups for Auckland City and the Rapids. 
Starting line up for the Waikato Rapids. Ace Ferguson gets the start in goal. Rogers, Wallace, Erickson and Kai Borden. And for Auckland City, it's Ann Taminov, Pickett and the three twigs, Denny, Sam and Art. Sitting next to me is Ronan Nykert. Ronan, welcome. Hello, Mark. Looking forward to this one. I think um, Rapids is the first game of the day, so should have some fresh legs. And hopefully they take the game to Auckland City. Yes, they struggled yesterday, but they'll look to bounce back. Auckland City, well, to be fair, everyone has struggled against them so far in this competition. Obviously, only these two teams, the Surge and Rapids, having played them. Ashby Peckham and Captain Erickson come forward and do the formalities. What do you think the Rapids need to do to get this win? Solid start. Um, don't want to give them too many easy opportunities. We know they can create them themselves. So we need, they need to be quite disciplined. And then in position, just value the ball. Um, wait for the, again, I keep talking about creating genuine opportunities and not forcing it. So that also depends on, on um, how the opposition is opposition's defending. But let's hope for a solid start from both teams. As the players look to be ready out on the court, the referees are doing their bits and bobs and look ready to go. Well, we've got the A-team on today, don't we, Ronan Nyker? If you want to call them that, the, the electric four, is uh, point, the uh, term we, we phrased. Right. Well, I was actually talking about the referees, but you can bring it to whatever you want. Anthony Riley and Ben Norman out in the middle. I was talking about the referees as well, Mark. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, there you go. Good that we agree on something for a change. As will be the Rapids to get us underway. And an opportunity early here for... And it's a goal. Thomas Pickett scores 10 seconds in. Quick start here from Auckland City. Well, Auckland City in the blue. Get out to the one goal lead. And that's probably not the start that the Rapids would have been looking for. As Antaminov rolls here for his side, picking far side. Art. That was Sam Twig. Chance here again. And it's just wide of the target there. I think that was Denny Twig. Good opportunity there to make it two. Oh, this is some start from Auckland City. Yeah, Auckland City have come under the block strongly. They tend to play better in their second game. There's Wallace now. Bit of pressure coming here from Twig. Still falls for Kai Borden. And he does win the kick in on this near side. Kai Borden had a solid performance yesterday. Had a lot of minutes in the court as well. Yeah, it's a good turn there from Ericsson as he drives a shot and Antaminov palms that one away. Will be a corner here. Oh. They won't want to let Auckland City get too far away from them. As that's just straight to Twig there, and he runs down the line here. Still keeps it in. Does well. One on one with the keeper now. And a good work there from Ericsson tracking back. Manages to clear that one away. Will be a corner here. Chance for a set piece for Auckland City. They're looking dangerous this four. As Twig drives the shot in, but blocked there by Ericsson. Kicking on the far side. And just looking over to the bench, seems Vava won't be taking part in today's game. It was a bit of an injury cloud yesterday. As another shot comes in there, but deflected. Will be another kick in. Yeah, I think he came in with an injury yesterday in that second game especially, and then played a lot of minutes in the game last night, so it's taken its toll. As blocked there by Wallace, out of court near side. Kicking again for Auckland City. Well, just not getting the ball at the moment are the Rapids. 
There's Pickin, drives forward here, drops it back, but Wallace is there. Sends that one out of court. Another kick in here for Auckland City. Just pretty much picking up where they left off in the last game. Yep, <laughs> like, we said, like I said earlier, they play the second game well. It's almost like they're playing two halves of futsal. In the second game, they come out quite strong. There's Twig. Far side for Twig. As they look to try and find a way through this rapid defense again, and that's well controlled there by Sam. A bit, a bit, a bit of pressure there from the Rapids. I like that from them. Choosing their moments when to step and try and win the ball high up the court. Yeah, Zan Taminov drops far side for Pickin. Yeah, it's just walking pace at the moment from Auckland City as they try to find a way through the defence. There's Art Twig near side for Sam Twig. As Wallace again gets in the way of that one, out of court on this near side for a kick in. There's a chance here. Good work again there by Wallace. He's been busy this first half. Yeah, I think he'd have um, fresher legs uh, to compare to the rest of his team. A few of those boys played a lot of big minutes yesterday. So I'm sure Coach Jet Lim, Lee sorry, will look to rotate the squad. And it's kicking comes. And a good shot there from Pickin, but just wide. There's Ferguson. He throws long here. Uh, it's Twig who gets a chance here for Ericsson. And a good save there from Antaminov. Good opportunity. And he just drops that one for Twig. There's Pickin far side now. And a good challenge there from Rogers. Forces it out of court, far side. As Twig steps forward here, drives it back post, but that's off uh, Borden. Will be a corner here. I think what Auckland City have at the moment that maybe other teams don't have is the kind of intensity that all four or three rotations can bring. It allows Coach Nick Downs to make those changes as Kai Borden steps forward and a good challenge there, but foul called there by referee Anthony Riley. First foul of the game. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for most teams to, to take on the Southland City side, but you've got to play, play what's in front of you. And as a shot comes in there from Wallace, but it's wide of the target. As subs coming. And turned over Rogers, far side now for Wallace. Kai Borden. There's Twig, chance here for Auckland City. This is great play here, and eventually finds its way in. No. Foul there, apparently. It's a no goal. Right. Find out what that one was for. As we're back underway, Kai Borden sends that one forward, but it's straight to Pickin, who drives now. And a good challenge there by Kai Borden as Rogers steps around. Erickson, good challenge there by Twig. And heavy challenges coming in from both sides at the moment. And, oh, OK. Anthony Riley calls that in favour of Auckland City. say anything but I think that probably should have gone the other way right in Nike, but I thought you weren't going to say anything I, I, I'm not going to say anything more than that yeah I think there's a little bit of confusion there on that call but um, obviously you've seen something that we haven't unless it was a foul before the push as Padel gets in the way of that one change is coming now for the Rapids Robson, Sharplin. 
Cluthy. And Tobias. As Robson comes near side for Sharplin. Tobias. There's a block there by Morgan. Left out of court, far side by Cluthy. Let's ask the question. I noticed that the captaincy was given to Ericsson, and we haven't seen Ethan Martin onto the court yet. I don't know if he's carrying any injuries or anything. I spoke to him briefly. He's, I think he's got a sore body. Like I said, a few of the boys played a lot of big minutes um, yesterday. Uh, and to back, back up this, this morning, I think they're going to have to rotate this squad a little bit. There's Morgan, chance here for him to drive forward. Good challenge. But they get back and defend. They have to go back as far as Ashby Peckham. Near side now for Cadell. Ashby Peckham. Margetts on this near side. Bit of space for him. Uses Morgan. Back to Margetts. Trying to get it through there is Ashby Peckham. Margetts now. Drops for Ashby Peckham. Far side for Padel. Good ball movement here from Auckland City. At the moment, the defence of the Rapids is holding. They've stepped up the tempo now. Auckland City is quite fast. As a shot comes in there from Ashby Peckham. But it's wide of the target. Mark gets apologising there. He should have been back post. Recognises that. Yeah. One with himself. Yeah, as we tick to six minutes gone here. One nil the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. As Clutie tries to put that one down the line, but it's out of court. Will be a kick in for Auckland City. As far side now for Padel. Ashby Peckham. As Cludy does well there. Uh, Robson sends that one out of court. It'll be a kick in again here for Auckland City. As Margetts drives, but falls here for Sharplin. Still going as Sharplin. Tobias is with him. Can't get that one through, though. Good work there from Margetts. It's still going as Sharplin. Can he drive that one? Good challenge there from Ashby Peckham sliding in. Sharplin drops back for Robson. Clutie now. And let's go back as far as Ferguson. Clutie down the line here for Sharplin. Good block there by Pidal out of court. Kick in now for the Rapids. Robson, near side for Tobias. Good challenge there from Ashby Peck and still fighting. And as he drives forward now, and he'll just slow that one down. Back as far as Padel, near side for Margetts. Just moving the ball around the back at the moment. Uh, Auckland City rotating around. Padel driving forward, good challenge there from Robson. As he comes sliding in, forces that out of court on the far side. So City for playing at a high tempo, much higher than I've seen them this weekend. I think they must have got the word from the other, other sets of four. As Margetts now drives into the feet of Ashby Peckham, but still going as Margetts, but he can't keep that in. Will be a goal line clearance here for Ferguson. As Ferguson goes long here for Tobias. Good touch from him. And still going as Tobias, but it's going to fall there for Padel. Finds the feet of Morgan. And just holds that one up and drops it back for Margetts. Morgan. Ashby Peckham. Near side for Morgan. 
Margetts. Finds the feet of Morgan, a bit of space. Far side for Padel. Steps back inside. Drops for Margetts. Gets onto his right. Shots in. Blocked there by Robson. Falls there for... That was Morgan who got the shot away. And Sharpland's going to have to come and clean up. Sends that one away. But it's only as far as... Ashby Peckham, and he does well to win that one, and we'll go down. That'll be a foul. Good double save there from Ferguson. Auckland City playing at high temper, creating that opportunity. But um, Ferguson making big saves there to keep them in it. Two fouls each in this half. There's Paulson. On the far side. As battling there is <laughs> Amati. But it turned over here as the Rapids go long. And Hawkins just heads that one back to Antaminov. Near side now for Espinosa. Six goals from this rotation in the last game. Two each for everyone but Paulson. As Clutie Ooh. driving forward. Amani in a bit of space here. Good work there from Robson. As Sharplin does well to intercept that one. Drops back for Robson. Sharplin. Press coming now from Auckland City. Tobias. Robson on his feet as Amadi gets the shot in, but that's wide of the target. And changes coming now. Akil. Dixon. Kai Borden and Ericsson onto the court. And good challenge there from Espinosa out of court near side. Dixon plays the feet of Kai Borden who sends that one forward to Ericsson but he can't bring it under control. Far side now for Akil. Back as far as Kai Borden who tries to find the feet of Dixon but it's out of court. As Espinosa far side for Paulson. As Paulson tries to find the feet there of Espinosa, comes away. And Kai Borden just clears that one out. And Taminov will get us started again. Drops here for Hawkins. Far side for Paulson. Akil coming forward on him. Near side now for Espinosa. Steps back inside. Drops forward here for... And a good challenge there from... I think it was Dixon. And it's Dixon still battling. And it's out of court on this near side. Will be a kick in for the Rapids. The yeah, Rapids happy to sit back and defend aggressively in their half and not give um, Auckland City any space, which is what they didn't do yesterday. And yeah, it's Dixon down the line. A good challenge there from Hawkins. Out of court. Ticked over halfway through this first half. 1-0 the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Kick in now for the Rapids. As Ferguson, heavy touch, open goal here. Chance for Paulson. Goes for goal and headed away there by Kai Borden. Had to be made. Every now and then they try that fifth man option. Do the Rapids. Didn't work that time. Yeah, it's smart to change it up and, and do something like that, especially when a team's got a lot of possession. You just got to make sure that um, you don't do yourself a disservice and that, you know your passing is quite accurate. As Paulson trying to find a way through, gets a shot away, but it's fallen for Keel. And he sends that one away, so Espinosa will start again. Finds the feet of Amadi. Back for Espinosa. Still going. Drops for Amadi. And he goes back as far as Hawkins. Pulls him down the line, but cleared away there by Dixon this time. Just driven into some fans. And a kick in here for Auckland City. Pulls in. Far side now for Espinosa. As he drives forward, step over, and pushes that into Kai Borden. Kick in far side for Auckland City. As Hawkins drives a shot in, and it's in. Wow. 
Goodness gracious me, how did that find its way in there? Not too much you can do about that. It's clinical from what we is right in the side of the bottom corner. Well, almost from nothing there, Dominic Hawkins has scored the second for Auckland City. And with nine minutes remaining in the first half, Auckland City out to a two-goal to nil lead. Amati battling in the centre of the court there. Still going as Amati. Chance here for Paulson. And that's it. He missed out in the last game. But Adam Paulson gets on the score sheet in this one. And a celebration to the camera. Yeah, a couple of quick goals there coming. One, not much you can do about it. The second one is from breakdown of play. And again, Auckland City clinical in transition. Good finish from Adam Paulson. As we're back underway here, quick goals. Just 20 seconds between those two for Auckland City, and they're coming again now. And that's just wide to the target there from Espinosa. That's four at the moment for Auckland City. They are dangerous. As Dixon finds the feet of Ericsson, far side now for a kill. Back for Kai Borden. Erickson, far side now. Akil, good challenge there from Paulson, out of court. As check in here, shot coming and not handled there by Antaminov. And the keeper was off his line, so a shot comes in, but position back here for the Rapids. Erickson drives around one and goes for goal, side netting. Dixon was arriving back post there. There's Paulson. Jogs this one forward, finds the feet of Amadi. He drops it back for Hawkins, far side now for Espinosa. Paulson drives a shot in and good save there from Ferguson. Seven minutes, 48 remaining in this first half. 3-0 the scoreline. Two fouls each. As a corner here for Auckland City. Espinosa tries to drop that one for the feet of Amadi, but it's Eriksson who gets in the way. Uses his keep up. And will come forward again now. Far side for Paulson. Trying to find a way through still. As a shot comes in, a little oh. touch there, and that's almost in. As I think it came off Dixon. Yeah, we saw a couple of deflections early on today. Just um, in the earlier game, wrong footing. Keeper from Serge Chris Priest. Auckland City are happy to take shots from there again. So I won't be surprised if that happens more often. As Rotation here, Pickin, Denny, Sam and Art Twig onto the court. And it will be a corner here for Auckland City. Seven and a half minutes remaining. And as Twig drops that for Twig and that is something by Sam Twig. A bit too easy there for Auckland City. Yeah, clinical set piece from Auckland City. Just, I mean, it's hard to play against. Um, Waikato Rapids are going to need to do something just to just break up this momentum that they've built. Not that it's going to be easy. And Sharplin now drops down the line for Robson. But pick it there first. And it will be a kick in now for the Rapids. And this Auckland City outfit, they look the business this year. And beaten finalists last year. Albeit by a team that is now absorbed into their own team. So the two finalists from last year making one super team. Super team for the Super League. Wouldn't want it any other way. As Robson under a bit of pressure here and is forced to kick that one out far side. As Pickin will drop this four twig. Shot comes in and that is also in. 
That's three, three goals from set piece. And that time I think it was Art Twig. Gets his name on the score sheet as well. So this four, three goals for them. There's Tobias now trying to find the feet of Sharplin. And a good challenge there from Tobias to win the kick in on the far side. Six minutes, 42 remaining. 5-0 the scoreline. Goals for Pickin, Sam, Art Twig, Adam Paulson and Dominic Hawkins. And Zantaminov drops near side here for Twig. It's moving the ball nicely at the moment, uh, Auckland City. Yeah, they're making the Rapids work quite hard and the Rapids are only playing with 12 players at the moment because Vavo is out injured and Ethan Martin hasn't entered the court yet. And there's Tobias now, drops far side for Rogers. Good ball across for Robson as he drives down the line, gets the shot and a good save there from Antaminov. And that'll be a foul. No, nope, still going there. And eventually it is called. Good shot there from Aiden Robson and Tamanoff making a save. But I could see him taking him down the line. Just, I just feel for this rapid team, just <laughs> their legs will be running out. Um, so, challenge to get on the back post after defending for so long. Yeah, I wonder how much of their mind is thinking towards this evening's game. It was a tight encounter last time the Rapids in the surge came together. And good movement here from Auckland City as Ferguson comes across to collect that one. As far side now for Tobias. Sharpen. Still working to find a way through. Good ball now here from Tobias. As still going as Sharpen loses out to Twig. Two on one here. Great challenge there, but still going as Twig. And eventually it's going to fall here for Sharpen, and he drives forward. He has Robson with him, gives it to Robson, but he can't keep that one in court. And it will be a kick in on this near side for Auckland City. Tough going out there for the Rapids at the moment. Just not quite falling for them. You have to, I mean, you have to compliment Auckland City. They're playing at a, a tempo and a and a level with purpose that is hard to defend against. You defend too deep, they score, score from shots from, from deep. You defend too high, they attack you in the space behind. Yeah, it's a good challenge there from Rogers. Out of court kick in for Auckland City. They've also got 14 foot players that are running you into the ground, so it's a tough ask for any team at the moment. And as Twig drives down the line here, coming across is Robson. Will be another kick in here for Auckland City. As Twig will get us back underway. Far side now for Pickin. Great move there from Pickin and a bit of space. There's a good opportunity there. Corner ball, says the referee. Another set-piece opportunity here for Auckland City. We've scored off a couple of these. As it's back as far as Pickham. Jockeys it back. Near side now for Twig. And a bit of space now, but can't get around Rogers. Slow down a little bit. Mm. Well, this is where a challenge there from Tobias as he drives forward. Still going as Tobias. Still going as him. That'll be a foul there. 
I think Spice has earned that far after. And timeout called here by Jitlam. And smart there. Just gives us players a bit of a break. Break up some of that momentum and they've also got a set piece to come back to that they can organise potentially on the on the tactics board. I think the thing is as well for the Rapids, they've got another game this evening. We've got to make sure that they play with the right attitude to bring that into this evening's game. If if they bring the wrong attitude for the rest of this game, five nil down might be hard to come back and win this one, but they need to get the right attitude to bring that through into this evening's game. Yeah, I mean, you also mentioned they could be looking looking ahead to that, that second game as the one that they're targeting, given how the weekend's gone, given the injuries they're carrying, and also just given how Auckland City are performing. I think any team in this league at the moment will find it tough to play against them. Like we said, they roll their fours on and off, and the quality doesn't drop. If anything, they pick up the temper with each four that they bring on. So they're constantly building on momentum, which is challenging for anyone. Yes, looking like a team to beat at the moment. As Robson drops here for Sharplin. And a great shot there from Casey Sharplin. And they do get one back here after the timeout. Yeah, well, I think Sharplin was, um, was impressive yesterday as well, even in, the, in tough circumstances. He's always looked like to create something. He's always looked to take, take players on. He's always looked to be the decisive effect on that team. So, well deserved. Good finish. As Auckland City get back into their work with three minutes 41 remaining. At the moment, it's almost like each of the fours are competing against each other. This four at the moment, goalless. Yeah. Significant change in this four, though. They've picked up the tempo and ball speed. If you've watched throughout the weekend, they, they're probably out of the six four. They've, they've been more tactical with the, with the way they play. I like the fact that they're probably moving the ball a bit quicker. They're actually moving a bit quicker. And shown by, you know, Margetta's frustration in the last set, not being on the back post to finish off one of their moves. And it's Pidal drops here for Margetts. Morgan. Ashby Pecker moves on to the left, and good save there from Ferguson. It's out of court on this near side for a kick in. That's good. We talked about the attitude. And good to see that they can score goals. And it's good work there by Kai Borden just to get in the way of that one as it drops for Ferguson. He rolls for Wallace. Back for Kai Borden. Good ball there, but in the way. There's. Dixon tries to get around Margetts but runs out of court. Turnover here for Auckland City. The Rappers can just get one back. They could, could cause a little bit of strife. What is it at the moment, Mark? 5-1. Two minutes, 42 remaining. And a clearance here. For Ferguson, drops short for Kai Border, near side now for Dixon. Wallace drops for Erickson. Far side now for Kai Borden. Wallace, good run from him. Can't get away from Ashby Beckham, who tries to take the kick in. The referee says no, it goes the other way. As Wallace drops for Kai Borden and shot just a bit high there. And a touch from Antaminov. Uh, this is positive. It's good to see why they've come out after that timeout. Good tactical timeout there from Jetlam. Yeah, gave the players a break, broke up some potential momentum, and then from it scored a goal as well. So almost a perfect timeout. Near side now for Ashby Peckham as he sends this long for Morgan. Heads back, but not in the way. Straight to Wallace as Ericsson drops near side for Dixon at pace. Coming forward, good run forward from him, but he won't be able to keep that one in. 
good attitude there. Yeah, I have liked Flitzen's attitude. He didn't get as many minutes yesterday, but he's shown in the in the spells that he's been on. He's um he's willing to take some initiative. And as Ashby Peckham takes a bit of space. Back for Margetts, far side for Morgan. Drops for Margetts. That falls for Kai Borden. A chance here on the break for the Rapids. Still going as Kai Borden. And almost sneaks its way in there. Saved there from Antaminov by the looks of things. Will be a corner set-piece opportunity here for the Rapids. Ferguson has come high. And caught out there by Margetts, who goes for goal and gets it. So the fifth man play doesn't work there for the Rapids. And Josh Margetts gets on the score sheet. Yeah, I talked about it yesterday and again today. Like, you see Oakland City recognise and as soon as they play it to their keeper, they rush and press them. This time they've paid the price. It's unfortunate because I thought... Rappers were playing pretty well, and they'd, they'd, they'd scored the last goal. Also nice to see Margetts get one on target <laughs> as well. Score in general, you mean? That's a nice little fist pump celebration as well from Margetts as he drops that for Padel far side. Pressure coming now, and good move there from Morgan, but Ferguson is out to that early. Yeah, smart little play there from, from Morgan, but well read by Ferguson. One minute, ten remaining here. Auckland City leading six goals to one. As Marquette tries to go long there for Morgan, but off target. And they'll start again through Kyboard and far side now for Wallace. Send it forward to Erickson, who gets around his marker. That's sent wide. Have to reset Dixon. He steps back in. And it's there for Ericsson. Drops back for Kai Borden. Shot comes in. Good toe. And good hands again there on Ronan Nyker. That was positive there. And Wallace almost beating Padal there. 43 seconds remaining. Ashby Peckham. Far side for Padel. Margetts. Back for Padel. Moving the ball nicely here as they start to come forward. Morgan, good step over him into a bit of space. Can you get the shot away? And good save off the line there. I think that was Dixon. It was, it was. Great work from Morgan there and Dixon helping us keep it out. Clearing it off the line. That's what you want to see defensively. In control of this game, uh, Auckland City, as we near closer to the break. Margetts, I'm sure he'll be looking for another today. Padal drops for Ashby Peckham. Just moving it nicely here, and that'll do it for the first half. Auckland City, a commanding six goal to one lead over the Waikato Rapids. We'll be back here in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style, and capability you know, and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow.
we believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. Ford, we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. Welcome back here to Trust Power Arena in Tauranga for day two of the Northern Travel Series Ford Futsal Super League. Auckland City taking on the Waikato Rapids. 6 1, the scoreline at the moment in favour of Auckland City. The players are rearing to go out onto the court about a minute before half time expires. So they'll just have to wait for the clock to tick down as they to adjust it now. And they're just getting the 20 minutes up on the clock. We look good to go. And it will be all considered to get us underway. Ronan, what did you make of that first half? Yeah, I mean, clinical performance from Auckland City. I thought Rabbit started well in their defensive shape, but um, in key moments, Auckland, Auckland just punished them, and obviously got to a really good start. Almost the first mistake of the game there from Auckland City, and as Paulson just let that one roll out of court near side, will be a kick in here. As Akeel gets us back underway, drops back for Robson. Far side for Clutie. There's the pressure coming on now, and a foul given away there by Paulson. Early foul in the half there for Auckland City. Yeah, interesting. I think none of us saw it. Uh, the only thing the right Rapids player appealed for it, but Paulson admitting to it, so here we are. I actually did see it, uh, Ronan. Oh, right. but, but, um, no, no. Not everyone has the same eye for the game as I do, as Paulson <laughs> and Akil coming together. And it is Paulson that wins out on this time. Hawkins near side for Paulson. As he steps into the half, drops it back for Hawkins. And it's given away one there. One here. Sharplin gets around. Can he get the shot away? He does. And a good save there from Antaminov. Akil was arriving back post but couldn't tap that one in. 
as Espinosa gets on to that one. Chips forward for Paulson. Far side for Hawkins. As he tries to find the feet there of Espinosa. And it's Sharplin who'll come away with it. Good to see defensive shift there from McKeel to like snuff out that dangerous ball to the back post. And is that one driven into Espinosa? Out of court will be a clearance here for Ferguson. We did chat to Ethan Martin at half time. He said didn't pull up very well in the warm up, so he probably won't play a part in this game. He said he's going to try for this evening. But it might not be till next weekend. We said that's a big loss for the Rapids. Yeah, both both Eden Martin and Davis Vava quite important for them yesterday. So again, they're going to have to use their whole bench. Yeah, as a Marty good turn there, gets the shot away, but block will be out for a corner here for Auckland City. As a Marty leaves that one, falls for Akil, and another foul here from Paulson. Might get a chatting to from the referee. Yeah. More than that, yellow card shown for Paulson. As Robson sits over this one. Ferguson's come up on this near side. And in possession of the ball now. Far side. He's going to stay high here. So they're getting into the fifth man early. Uh, the Rapids. This is good from the Rapids. And Robson gets on that one far side. Falls for a keel. Just forced that one into... And a chance shot here from Amadi, but that's wide right of the target. That was better. Much yeah. better from Ferguson there. Uh, again, you're going to play fifth man, you've got to play quick. Uh, and, and I think he knows they're going to press him, so lovely to see. And as Akil drops this one down the line for Robson, and he can't keep that one in. Out of court, far side. As Paulson now. Finds the feet of Amadi. Good defensive work there from Akil, but it's fallen here for Paulson. Centering ball, back post four. And a good save first up. Crashing into each other here at uh, Auckland City, and they're going to have to recycle. Good chance there for Espinosa. On the ball now. And she gives us near side for Paulson. Takes a few steps forward, steps back inside. Trying to find the feet there of Amadi, but uses... Espinosa, there's that ball to Amadi, back heel here, and a great chance there, and a good save from Ferguson. As Sharplin comes away with it. Numbers back, though, for Auckland City, and they start again. Clutie down the line here for Akil. Espinosa, good challenge, but out of court. Kick in here for the Rapids, far side for Sharplin. Hawkins coming forward on him. Akil back for Sharplin. Turns nicely. Can he get the shot away? Does. And a good save here from Antaminov. Wow. <laughs> Some save. Falling over there. Just parries that one out to his right. Will be a corner here for the Rapids. Good attitude from the Rapids here. Pick up the ball speed and their movement. Now into fifth man. Let's make sure they move the ball quick. Ferguson. Far side here for Akil. But he won't be able to keep that in court. Yeah, I'd much rather that from Ferguson. I'm, Options went on, play early, balls out, danger averted. As Antaminov will drop this one for Espinosa, and he'll just walk forward in the court. As he can't get that one round Sharplin, still going though as Espinosa. Far side for Hawkins, and he can't find the feet of Espinosa down the line. That was just need to keep an eye on Amadi's movements in behind their shoulders. As Clutie now steps forward, far side for Akil. Good movement here from Akil, and a good challenge there. Uh, stand corrected. Foul says the referee. You can see he's starting to rack up the fouls, aren't they? Mark. Third foul of the half. 6 1, still the scoreline. Just to the side, yeah. Referee having a chat to the Rapids bench. As Auckland City come forward now with Paulson, who just slows the play down. Near side for Hawkins. 
Coulson. Espinosa. Far side for Poulsen. As he chips forward here and Ferguson does well. Gets high there. Sharplin. Near side for Clutie. Sharplin, that's nice from the Rapids. Robson still going. Good ball forward for Sharplin. As Hawkins wins the kick in here for Auckland City and changes coming. Twigs and Pickin on the court and changes also for the Rapids. Far side here for Twig. There's Pickin. There's touch there from Ericsson. Yeah. Out of court, kick in far side for Auckland City. Yeah, but uncharacteristic there from Sam Twig trying to force that pass. With Denny, Denny Twig offering an easy option plus his own goal. There's picking in a bit of space, gets the shot away, but partially blocked there. So it just falls for. There's far side now for Ericsson. And they can't keep that one under control, out of court. Near side here for Pickin. Gives forward for Twig. Rolls back for Pickin. Twig. And a good challenge there from Rogers. over five minutes gone here in the second half. 6-1, the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Three fouls for them. None for the Rapids. As Ferguson comes out to get that one. Falls here for Rogers who drives forward. Kai Borden can't get on that one and has to be cleared away there by Tobias, I think it was. Corner here for the Rapids. They were dangerous on the set piece in the first half. Picking. Drives that forward, but Kai Borden comes away with a chance to move forward. Still going is Kai Borden. Still going. Tries to find the feet there of Rogers, but it falls for Picking. Drops back for Twig. Erickson coming forward on them. Back as far as Antaminov. Has to chip that one. Moving it forward now. As Tobias gets enough on that, and it's out of court, kicking on the halfway line for Auckland City. There's Twig. Near side for Pickin. Good movement here from Pickin as he gets the shot away and it's saved, but still going, still here as Ferguson jumps on that loose ball. Rolls for Kai Borden. Tobias. Can't give that to Ericsson. And foul called there by the referee. First one of the half there for the Rapids. An interesting ebb and flow of this game. Auckland City. Feels like He's slowing things down a bit as a chance to shoot here and a good save there from Ferguson. Pressure from Pickin coming. And he rolls for Tobias on this near side. Far side now for Kai Borden. Rogers. There's Tobias, drives that one forward, but it's taken by Twig and he just walks it into the half. Still going as Twig. And he can't keep that in court. Kick in for the Rapids. Yeah. 
As Tobias flicks down the line for Kai Borden. Erickson back for Tobias. Still going. A good block there from Picken. And if he can keep that in, chance here for Auckland City. Picken down the line. Can he get it across? No, he can't. And Twig in the middle. As they throw long and it's turned over straight away. As Denny Twig on this near side picking. Far side for Sam Twig. He can't get around Rogers though, who uses the feet of Ericsson, but can challenge there from Twig. Drop back. Sam Twig now driving forward and a half. Good ball. Up to the far side there of Art Twig. Eight minutes gone here. Six one the scoreline. Forward Futsal Super League. Final game of the day for Auckland City. Still one to go after this. Yes, yeah, good moves there from Twig. And a good challenge from Kai Borden, but it falls again for Twig. Back as far as Sam Twig. And a foul there. Second foul for the Rapids. A few tired legs by the looks of things out there. Yes. Well, we've fallen into an interesting stage of the game, haven't we, Mark? Yeah, it's um, just balls been moved around the court, no real opportunities being created. But knowing as we say that, there will be an opportunity created. And there it is. And just like that, it's a great finish there from Pickin. You have to call that another really good set piece from Auckland. Set piece play. Well finished. Again, I think if you compare yesterday's game to today's, I think Rappers have defended better in terms of their setup, I think. But Auckland have been so clinical from set piece. And you know, a quick start scoring like right at the start of the game. It makes it really tough. You four here for Auckland City. Nuggets, Ashby Peckham, Morgan and Padal. As Ashby Peckham drops back for Margets. Padal, far side for Margets. Ashby Peckham. Steps back inside. Almost just inviting the Rapids to make the mistake as that's out of court. And changes will come here for the Rapids. Seven one the scoreline in favour of Auckland City. Ten and a half minutes remaining in this game. How many goals have Auckland City scored so far this weekend? It's been a few. And as Morgan gets on that loose ball, Padel now, chance for him, rolls back to Morgan. Still going as Morgan. And he just chips that one over. As Clutie. Bit of pressure coming there from Auckland City, and it's turned over. Nuggets drops it back as far as Ashby Peckham. Near side for Padel. Still going as Margetts. Recycles possession. Far side now. No. Uses Morgan. Far side now for Ashby Peckham. Shot. And side netting there. As it's sent long here for Sharplin. Tracking back though. Good ball forward here. Chance for Clutie. And it's in. Good work there from Sharplin. And he gets his second of the day. And it's 7-2 here at Trust Power Arena. It's just about to say, Rafa just can't get a hold of the ball. A quick, quick restart there from Ferguson. Sends, sends Sharplin down the line. Organizing able to set up. Good finish. The positives from the game is they're still scoring goals. Just Auckland City being clinical. And Sharplin has two today. Hey, 
in your side now for Morgan. Yeah, this Auckland City four just happy to hold position, wait for opportunities, not pressing too much. And there's a handball called there. It will be the fourth foul for Auckland City. Nine minutes remaining. Let's see if, if Dixon Robson and um, Sharpland take on this Auckland City team and try and draw fouls. Yeah, there's kicking on the far side here as it gets stuck in the forward side. Dixon near side for Robson. Flutie. Robson. His fourth there is Clutey still going, but Ashby Peckham comes across. Plays Spar back as Antaminov. And they'll build from the back here. Will Auckland City. Morgan. Back for Ashby Peckham. Padel far side. As Clutey comes away with that one. But it's turned over again. Just guilty at the moment of turning over possession quickly are the Rapids. As Morgan uses Ashby Peckham far side. As Margetts, good ball forward, Padel, but it's Robson who gets a foot in the way there, out of court. Will be a corner on the far side. Pickham uh, gets on organise this set piece. And is it full here for Ashby Pickham? Good save there by Ferguson. I think that was a right footed shot from Ashby Pickham. As Margetts loses out to Sharpland. Still going as Sharpland. And good strength there from Ashby Pickham. Wins the kick in on this near side. Put out. Margetts. Ashby Peckham. And it'll go back for a goal line clearance. Ferguson will get us back underway. 7 minutes 25 remaining. 7-2 the scoreline here. Ford Futsal Super League. As Sharpland still going, but good challenge there from Ashby Peckham. And a chance here for Auckland City to break. And as Ashby Peckham holds on to that one well. Margetts, far side for Padel. And he tries to find the feet there. Oh, of Ashby Peckham. Sharpen looks like he has the better of Ashby Peckham speed wise, but Ashby Peckham using his intelligence and using his body to protect that. And also using his intelligence to come to the bench when he's tired. And a chance here for Padel, but it was Dixon, I think, that got the ball back, but Morgan's still here, lays back for Paulson. Bit of space for him. Toes, but blocked there by Robson and Sharplin. Out of court, near side kick and changes coming now. As Amadi, Hawkins and Espinosa join Paulson on the court. And here's Hawkins, far side for Amadi. Espinosa. Hawkins steps back inside, has a left foot shot, but that's wide of the target as changes come now for the Rapids. Tobias, Wallace, Kai Borden and Ericsson onto the court. There's Ericsson. Near side for Tobias. Down the line there for Wallace. Ericsson. Kai Borden. Press coming now as it's sent long here for Wallace, but he won't be able to drag that one in, and it will be a goal line clearance here for Antaminov. As he drops for Espinosa. Paulson. 
Hawkins on the far side. As a toe comes in, blocked there by Wallace. Will fall for Hawkins. Espinosa back for Hawkins. Near side for Paulson. Wallace coming forward on him. Trying to find a way through here is Paulson. It does, and that's almost through to the back post there for Hawkins. But nobody gets anything on it, and it will be a keeper's ball as Ferguson rolls. As Kai Borden back forward to Byers. Heavy touch there. Follow up tackle there from Kai Borden. And he's still going, but eventually turned over. Just over five minutes remaining here. 7 to the score line. As Wallace. Still going as Wallace, and good save in the end there. And that's out of court. How did that end up as a clearance here for Antaminov? Bizarre sequence of events there. And now Auckland City survive. There's a Marty in a bit of space here. Kai Borden steps forward on him. Far side for Espinosa. Hawkins. Paulson. Hawkins. Espinosa. Good ball there for Hawkins in a bit of space. Gets a shot away, but side leading there from Hawkins. There's Wallace now. Tobias. And that'll be the fifth foul there. Unlucky from Amadi. As he came sliding in, just left his arm in the end there. So Auckland City on five fouls for this last four minutes. Could make things interesting here. There's a chance here for Kai Borden. Puts it into the middle. Chance for oh. Tobias, but blocked there by, I think it was Hawkins. Good little link-up play there from the Rapids. Just last-minute block in from Auckland City. As Kai Borden puts it far side for Ericsson. Ferguson is up high, and Wallace can't hold him to that one. Hawkins chance to shoot, and headed away there by Kai Borden. As Ferguson, well, that was good skill there from the keeper to keep that one in. As Ericsson drops back for Kai Borden, he gets around Espinosa. This is good from the Rapids. As it's dropped back as far as Tobias, Wallace in a bit of space. He flicks back, but it's out of court. And it will be a kick in. I wonder if Rapids are going to bring Robson Sharplin on with five fouls, or do they hold him out for the next game? Three minutes, 20 remaining here as Paulson walks forward. Just a reminder, last game of the weekend kicks off at 5 p.m. this evening. Between the Rapids and the Surge. The first game was an absolute doozy. Rapids coming away with that one. Three goals to two. So expecting an exciting game. And there's Paulson now. Gets around Kai Borden. That's great body position then. Oh, hit there from Amadi. It's just wide of the target. Wow. Here we go. Sharpen on the court. Let's see if we can draw a sixth foul. As Tobias can't keep that one in court, and subs will be made here as it's Twigs and Pickett onto the court. Denny, Sam, and Art. And it's Pickett on this near side. Denny Twig. Far side for Sam Twig. Pickett can't find Art Twig. Two and a half minutes remaining here. Seven to the score line. Here 
Erickson back for Kai Borden. Press coming and a chance here for Twig. And well worked there from Kai Borden. As he has to clear that one off the line. As Twig was driving through there. Will be a corner here for Auckland City. Twig trying to find a way still through. Still going as Twig drops back for Picken. Sam Twig back heel here. Steps back inside. Still going. As Ericsson coming forward now. Picken called into action. As he settles it down here for his side. Twig. Can't get through Tobias. Chance here for the Rapids, but they just reset with the Ericsson. Far side now for Sharplin. Tobias. Kai Borden. Sharplin. Kai Borden. Good movement here from the Rapids. Good ball down there. Kai Borden first time, but... High and wide there. Probably had time for a touch. Yeah, I think just anticipating the pressure from Auckland City there. Again, good little, little bit of link-up play. When they play quick at times, it looks good. There's Auckland City. Happy to just knock it around at the back at the moment. I think they want the Rapids to come out and chase it. Open up a bit of space. And there's a mistake there from Pickett. Out of court, far side. Kick in now for the Rapids. Kai Borden uses Robson on this near side. Back for Ericsson. Kai Borden. Robson. Good work there from Kai Borden. Bit of pressure coming from Twig. Robson, near side for Sharplin. Kai Borden loses out there, and it's with Pickin. He'll just slow play down. 38 seconds remaining. 7 to the scoreline here in favour of Auckland City. As Twig with a bit of space to move, drives that one in, but it's Ericsson who gets in the way. Kick in far side for Auckland City. Central court here for Twig. Far side for Pickin. Bit of space for Twig to move into and a good block there from Robson. 14 seconds remaining. It'll be job done here this weekend for... Auckland City is a good save there from Ferguson as Sharplin running down the line trying to draw the foul. Drops here for Kai Borden. It's a low shot but probably off target and that'll do it. Full time here, 7-2. Auckland City take this one. Men's Ford Futsal Super League. Last game of the weekend for them. Rona Nyker, what do you make of that game? Yeah, I mean, I think Auckland City took the game away from them early on. Um, clinical at the start. Uh, Rabbits did what they could, but it's a struggle when you've got 12 players in heavy leagues to compete with this Auckland City side at the moment. Uh, two goals for Sharplin and the Rapids for Auckland City. Two for Pickin, Sam Twig, Art Twig, Josh Margetts, Adam Paulson and Dominic Hawkins, the goal scorers. That'll do it. For now, we'll be back here at 5 p.m. for the final game of the weekend where the Rapids take on the surge. It was a close game the first time those two teams played. We'll hope for much of the same. Until then, stay safe. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whanau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. 
Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka mana. Partnerships, mana natahi. Pathways, ara. And tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers. Paves the way for future generations. Grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships. And creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. No, my hockey bar. Welcome back to Trust Power Arena for this final game of the Ford Futsal Super League Northern Series weekend. Auckland City have just made it a perfect weekend with a 7-2 win over the Rapids. Next up, the Rapids uh, back in action against the Surge. The Surge, while well, they're chasing their first win of the weekend, and the Rapids, they'll be looking to make it two from two against the Surge and claim a vital three points. My name's Mark Matsis, and I'll be calling you through the action today. Let's have a look at the starting lineups for both sides. All right, and lining up for the home team tonight for the last game of the Northern Travel Series here at Bay of Plenty Trust Power Arena. We have in goal Chris Priest, number 19. Number two, Thomas McMillan. Number seven, Aaron Carter. Number 10, Daniel Watts. And captain number 13, Mario Ramos. And for the Waikato Rapids, in goal, number one, Patrick Steele, captain. Number three, Connor Cloyte. Number 10, Maxwell Erickson. Number 18, Casey Sharplin. And number 19, Benjamin Borden. Well, I hope you've uh, had a wonderful weekend and have got a chance to catch some of the futsal action here at Trust Power. There's been some wonderful goals, some amazing performances. And if you didn't get to catch the first game of the weekend, which was this match, the Rapids versus the Surge, then you won't remember how fierce a game it was. Both teams came out with a lot of nerves. And after a week in a futsal, we're about to find out if they've been able to cool them. We're about to find out if um, the accuracy has got a little bit better. There'll be some tired muscles and bones out there. Hopefully the players have done what they need to to recover. In the second game, Battle of the Kaimais is underway. Sharplin to Borden. Surge at half court. Giving them the space. Sharplin, nice turn inside. Looking for that middle. Blocked off. Nice tackle by Ramos. Early shot. Great save. 
Yes, yeah, good save there from Steele. Caught on early. Vinny, you love to see it. Love that. Nice, easy decision. Quick and simple. Saved, and now the Rapids are on the attack. Intercepted. Back to Captain Ramos. Settled down. Will take his time to McMillan. Watts to Ramos to Watts to McMillan. Oh, they're just going to settle it down. Looking through the middle. Defended well. Intercepted again. Turned over very quick. Great ball. Just couldn't latch on to that one. Right idea, though. Steele starts with it. Rolls it out to Sharplin. Borden's on it now. To Koiti. Borden going wide. Big tackle by Captain Ramos. Surge bench love that. You can definitely see a bit more composure in both sides now. That middle ball, nice and direct, one touch. And then Maxwell Erickson has scored early. Yeah, it was a good first up save there from Priest, but just wasn't able to hold on to that, and Erickson was at the spot to tap that one home. Good start here for the Rapids. Great start here for the Rapids. Maxwell Erickson positioning himself really well. Priest won't be happy about not holding that. Ramos trying to take on Rapids flanker Koiti. Not doing it, but they get the kick in to McMillan, to Carter. Carter's looking inside. Ramos to McMillan. Looks for the big diagonal ball. Doesn't quite work out. Sergio will have it in midfield. Ramos pokes it to Carter. Big tackle. Certainly a raised reputation from uh, some of these surge players this weekend, although they'll be dying to get the win. Aaron Carter with um, three first-half goals, I believe, against Auckland. Yeah, had a good start in that game as well. It was good to see. Just, I guess, hasn't got into the games as much since that first game, but... You know, you don't want to give him that shooting channel, Vinny. 100% he's lethal. And Big tackle there. Surge kick in. Yeah, Aaron Carter's in a few years now, Super League, and um, he's really grown into the role. Yeah, I mean, the same with Ramos as well. You've seen over the years, he's started pretty young. He's a pretty experienced head in this side as well now. 100%. Nice little touch. Big win. Not quite on the same page, though. Border opting for the toe hack. Well defended. I actually learnt uh, Kai Borden from Byron Bay. And has just come over, flies back home, and then he's back in town for next weekend. So international player from Australia uh, playing in this rapid side. Right on, so I guess he's home for one night and then back over here. <laughs> Pretty much. Back to the action. Play breaks down for the surge. Steele's got it now. Mr. Coyote. Borden in midfield. Seen great things from Borden. It's quite a high level of futsal over in Australia. Maxwell Erickson looks to turn and shoot, and it's blocked by McMillan. I think he's the danger man that the surge needs to worry about here, Erickson. Just the way he's sitting up top. I <clears throat> want to make sure they keep an eye on him. Yeah, absolutely. Got a few goals to his name this weekend as well. We'll be happy with that, but he won't be finished. Another youngster who's had uh, quite a few years in the Futsal Super League. You can really see the growth and the maturity. Positioning. Lovely one, two. McMillan goes for the shot. Just wide. It's been the story of the weekend for some of these teams. That back post ball just haven't had that runner coming through to tap it in at the end. Yeah, absolutely. It can be a very demanding weekend getting into four games, but these boys are very young. 
Nice touch. Settles it down. Ramos. Oh, lovely play. The diagonal ball was, was right on and Aaron Carter stretching for it but not quite getting a solid tackle on it. Borden receiving and turning in a dangerous area. Being deflected out for a Rapids kick in. Sharpton's on it. He'll kick it to Borden. Steals position out wide. Serge looking to press a bit more now. Is it that intent? Good. Good positioning from defensive positioning from Serge Pivot. McMillan really blocking the middle. And that'll be the first foul of the game. Just got on the right side of him there, did Ramos. And Kai Border just jumped into his back. Uh, first foul there of the game. Leaves him with a bit of a sore hip. McMillan takes a great shot, not too far away. He did score an absolute screamer, did McMillan. So not surprised he shot from that range. Yep, his tail's up. Fair enough. You want your players to take that initiative. Ball goes through the middle again. Tobias is on. Good battle there with McMillan. It'll be a rapid kick in. Good to see Ethan Martin out on the court as well. Missed the earlier game today. He's feeling a bit sore, so he seems to have recovered and back out there. play just breaking down nice ball speed just breaking down with the accuracy Serge having it now McMillan's put a nice ball through but Carter can't quite get there it'll be a rapid throw from the keeper and the Serge are back at half court yeah, I think this rotation for the Rapids with Ethan Martin on the court they look to find space and Robson's been good all weekend, as well as Tobias. I was talking to Benjamin Wallace before this game. He's been out of the game for a few years now and called back in. So good to see him back out on the court. Yeah, always great to see returning players. And um, he's definitely got the support of three very experienced players on his team there, four of them, including the keeper. Surge with it now, nice ball speed. Just looking to keep it. Oh, nice nutmeg, can't get it back though. Martin's gone down the line, he's gone wide. And Carter's just got a tackle from behind that's going to go for a kick in, or is it a corner? Might be a corner, Ethan Martin asking the question there about a rolling foul not given by the referees. Happy for that to be a corner on the far side. It looked like maybe Ramos, when he was um, pursuing Martin, maybe just tripped on his own shoes and maybe caught Martin in the process. But uh, Martin doing really well to just carry on and got quite far down the line. Kick in now. Goes to Robson on halfway. High press from Carter. Go all the way back to steal. Robson will pick it up. Martin. Tries to do an elusive turn. Some good pressure from Tristan. Keenan Howard now. Fancy feet. Can't quite come away with it. <clears throat> oh, some nice feet from Ramos and the foul gets called up. Second foul there for the Rapids in this half. Asking the question again is Ethan Martin. And it's up now, Carter's come off for Mong. We'll be looking to see a set play here, but they might just settle it down and keep it for a bit. Yes, they will. Oh, right idea. Looks dangerous. Accuracy just not quite there. Is that tied legs? I also think the challenge here for the surge is in, in the games that they've you know, early first day, they went up 2-0 both times, and when they went behind, they weren't able to kind of get back into the game. So the challenge here today for them is to be able to come from behind. 
of sense. Some good battling there. Good chance. And I must have just let that run out. Yeah, absolutely, and, and probably just a little bit of um, an experience in leadership in terms of giving away soft fouls in the attacking half. They got their foul count out many times. That's a great Ooh. ball. Oh, absolutely split them open diagonally. Great opportunity there for the surge. I think we've, we've seen it in games as well, giving away silly fouls in the, you know, basically in the defensive area, yep. and that's costing them later in the game. Yep, and that is definitely a, um, a learned skill is, is where to give away fouls because there are definitely places where your coach is more than happy to, to give away fouls. You're going to take away risky, risky moments. Big clash there. Ramos uses his body really well, mm. and he's just going to keep it. Looks to turn. Gets caught out. Robson gets a shot away. Well handled by Priest. He gathers it up after he spills it. Roll it out to Tristan. Kawana. Pass through the middle. Not done. Nice little turn there. Oh, it's hectic. Finally, that foul comes for Ethan Martin. As he jogs off for a quick break. It's been a nervy start, really. Oh, that goal from Ericsson, both sides settling into the game a little bit more now and weary of making mistakes. See Vava's on the court now. Sure he's got a lot of strapping on those ankles. I saw him hobbling yesterday and just pushing through it. Really mentally strong, that boy. Some nice build-up play, short passes. Just breaking down in the middle. Sharpen will settle it down. Vava getting bumped off the ball. By ex teammate Mario Ramos. Yeah, good to see Vava back out on the court. He missed the last game against Auckland City as well, so good to see him and Ethan Martin back out on there in the action. The physios this weekend definitely getting their, uh, their fingers worked out in their minds. Lots of players to tend to. Great piercing ball by Howard. Well defended by Vava. Surge players creeping up a little bit. They want to defend them high. And they get the cherries for it. It'll be a rapper's kick in. And they're staying high. They really want to pressure them. Steele has it. Gets it forward to Sharplin. Howard's on him defending him. Goes for the turn. It'll be a rapid's kick in. Just, under, just over eight minutes gone on the first half. Boarding is the up and over. Great one. Gets the knee of Davis Vava. And it's just gone wide. Yeah, good run there from Vava. And a great ball. Yeah, surge kick in. Kenan taking on a couple players. Howard passes it to Kuwana. Fast and direct. That's what we saw lots in the first game. And that ball is the property of the stadiums now. A gift to the footballing gods, Vidi. Don't know if I'll get that one back. <laughs> Vava. His crab walk on. Shifts it. Sharplin to Ericsson. In the circle. Bold defended. A lot of pressure there. Holding it up well is Ericsson. Go for a corner. 
Yeah, that was good strength there from Ericsson. Just held on to it well. And it was a double team eventually that forced the corner. Oh, oh how has he snuck that in? It is a great goal. He's shot pretty much on a right angle to the way he was facing, and it's gone into the side netting. Court keeper JP Priest off, and that's 2 0 to the Rapids. Yeah, Casey Sharpland again, two goals in the previous game against Auckland City. Got his scoring shoes on, and from that angle, fantastic finish there from the number 18. Definitely caught everyone off guard, I think. Just a relatively simple corner kick in, and he just punched it. Surgery starting with some intent. Yeah, well, the turn now of the Rapids to be up two goals to nil. Maybe the surge can drag this one back in. Steele got it. Pressure on him. Nice header. Back through the middle. Defensive header by Ramos. I think they were asking for a pass back there, not given by the referee. I don't know if he really meant to send it that way, so wouldn't have counted. Oh, well battled by Sharplin. Slid in there. Passes back and seals it down. Borden on the ball. Goes wide to Ericsson. Intercepted. Howard on it. Tries to go for the nutmeg. Ramos. And Kawana goes for the optimistic back post. Just a little clip. Just a few too many wee books on it. Thought I'd heard the referee calling advantage there, but haven't blown it. So it stays at two fouls each. Rapids will restart. Just taking their time, giving their players a chance to catch their breath. Robson and to Martin. Rogers now. Nice little turn. Gets through the middle. Lots of space. Big slide. Good turn out of space though, and Martin gets a shot off. Well defended. And he gets another chance to get a shot off, and it's well defended again. Surge under all sorts of pressure. And a good save there from Priest coming forward. And to be on his toes. A little chip for the corner. And it'll be a surge kick in. Take the opportunity to sub some players. One brother to another. To McMillan at the back. Just going to settle it down. Nice quick passes. Found, a, found an opportunity through the middle. Hasn't quite come off. Rolls back to Patrick Steele. Martin now in his corner. Under a bit of pressure. Bit of defensive pressure. They've managed to find the middle. They've got themselves out of it. Martin, nice little kick through. Be a Rapids kick in in their attacking half. Rogers to Robson. Tobias and it gets defended out. It's back with Steele now. Martin's got it. Surge defending on half court. tackle by McMillan. Tobias just looking to get on the outside of him into the corner. Not successful. Just holding position well at the moment. Uh, the Rapids yeah, okay. need the surge to come and get it if they want it. Obviously two goals to the good allows them to play a little bit differently. But at the moment building pressure through position. Nice quick passing. Twice is he's looking for that 
Looking for that runner and Robson right by the goal and it's defended really well yeah. by McMillan. Yeah, it had to be there, did McMillan. Sends that one out for a corner. Quick corner taken. Martin gets a shot off. And it's booted down the line. It'll be kick in in the Rapids defensive half. Just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Asking a lot with that ball. Loves it hard and fast. Robson's given it to Martin, who's flicked it over. And that is almost another gift to the arena, but that one will fall down the side. They're kicking. Rogers takes it, gives it to Martin, rolls it to Sharplin. I'd like to see this Sharplin and Martin on the court a little bit more together mm. for the Rapids. Two experienced players. If you, if you need to get a goal, I guess those are the two you probably want on the court at the same time. Robson to Martin. Mr. Rogers. Little flick pass. Controlled well on the knee. Ooh. And defended well there in the corner by the surge. Rapids corner. Goes out to Martin deep. Goes back into that corner. Well defended. It's a scrap there. Rapids have got it back. Martin's got it. He's gone to the corner. He's found Sharplin. Looking for that inside pass. Intercepted by McMillan. Just turns out and settles it. Tried to settle it, but just got absolutely swarmed by two Rapids defenders. Didn't have a choice but to try to get forward. And again, that pressure coming from turning over possession when they got it there, the surge. And the Rapids will get back into their work. Sharpen, great toe. Put a good toe out there. Just couldn't keep it. Sharpen will win it back. And it's rolled up for a surge kick in. Surge looking to settle it. A few bounces around. Watts to McMillan. This is good from the Surge. Bit of possession now back in their favour. Looking for that forward pass through two players. Yeah, probably just trying to force it a little bit too much there. The option was around the back available. McMillan now. Through the middle. It's looking good. Goes for the toe hack. Not a bad option. Follows up. Just slightly spilled by Steele. It'll be a corner. He's taking it quick. Roll it back and he shoots it just wide. Nice quick decision making though. Few short passes between Borden and Sharplin. Goes up the line. Looking for Sharplin. Turn it back over. Steele's got it now. Rolls it to Wallace, to Erickson. It's in the corner. Nice little pass. Good tackle by Watts. And he's been strong defensively all weekend, has Watts. Yeah. really what you need from your from your pivots is, um, is to work back and get behind the ball. Turnover. Kawana tries a turn and gets possession turned over and Rappers get a shot away. Yeah, Kai Borden had big minutes in the last game. Still running strong out here tonight though. Rapids corner not quite going the way they'd hoped for. And the surge using the chance to 
change up some of their players. I think Carter and Ramos on the court are key for the surge here. So it's almost like they can't afford to concede when they're off the court. And then when they're on, they've really got to make it count. Yeah, they make really good combinations as well with uh, Tristan Kawana. They've, um, together, I believe they've won the New Zealand Secondary Schools futsal title, uh, which was maybe a couple years ago. So the combinations are there, the familiarity. What can Kawana come up with here? Rolls it back, controls it nicely. A step over from Carter. Rolling foul, I believe. We the third foul there for the surge. Rolls into the middle, dangerous spot. Nice play, just short of the target though. To be encouraged by that. That was a good play there from Ramos, bit of space and just gets the toe away. Perfect intercepts it. He's on the ball now. Bit of an air and touch. Carter comes up with it. They look to settle it down. Kawana on halfway. Through to Carter. And just a slightly heavy touch, but you can see they're coming alive a bit more. Yeah, I like that from Carter. I want to see more of that from him. Just taking a bit of space and trying to beat the player. And Two that touch. looks like a brain explosion. Yeah, two touch there. Just picked, <laughs> picked it up. Had to be picked up, though. Had to be picked up. <laughs> Otherwise, you let it in. I like this timeout being called. <clears throat> it worked earlier in the day for yeah. Jet Lim and the Rapids when they had a free kick in a similar position. So uh, good call from Mario Ramos Sr. here. Four minutes and two seconds to go on the first half. Three fouls to the Rapids plays two to the surge. With a spot kick to come. Surely it's Carter to step up and knock this one in. It'll be Captain Ramos giving him that. Is it a pen or is it a... Free kick. Indirect free kick. I'm sure they'll just roll it off to the side here. I hope they just boot it. Hence the timeout. Yeah, it's a good call, isn't it? Just to reset the players, have a think about what the coach wants to see. Maybe a set piece from training. Vinny, I believe you're involved in that, so maybe you can call us through what the play might be. I'm not at liberty to discuss those details. <laughs> no, fair enough. With two, with uh, a big series coming up next weekend. <laughs> but expect exciting. <laughs> oh. Nice and simple, and it just rolls off the legs of Borden in the right place at the right time. Nice little flick by McMillan. And a crucial foot there by Borden. A second crucial foot in a row. He didn't even flinch. He on didn't. That one. Impressive, brave play. Looks like he's done that before. <laughs> Kawana on the ball halfway. Just that kind of waist height ball. Either wants to be at someone's head at the back post or just along the floor. Carter on it now. Ramos to Kalana. Again, that accuracy just a little bit off as it tied legs. Well, I think Ramos did well there to get that out of court on the far side. Yeah. Oh, this could have been trouble there. Kalana, if it's Carter, can't reel it in. Oh, he's so close though. The sliding attempt. A few protests. We end up being a surge corner. Oh, and quick thinking. Oh, 
one again. Some good play, just, just not quite happening for the surge. Yeah, was it the wrong time to be making the substitutions there from the Rapids, and then they were always chasing it from there. Oh, good save. Again, not sure how you saw that. Soft foul. And I think the fourth. That is correct. I was reading it wrong before during the timeout. Four fouls for the surge. Just over three minutes to go. Kawana getting a talking to by the ref. Yeah, and as well, I think that missing, well, they did call a rolling foul that wasn't added. So true. that could have been fifth foul. So I guess it does change when you are on five. Vava now back in the game, into the corner, tries to roll it back for a shot. Quick feet. Robson in the corner, he'll settle it. Vava's looking for that middle ball, and it's just come off the outside of his foot. Again, I think just trying to force that a little bit too much. That they were building pressure earlier from rotating that ball and just giving it away there. They're getting a lot of glory uh, yesterday morning through the middle. Just tons of balls going through the middle, no worries. And um, the surge have obviously talked about that and minimised that danger. Carter on the ball now, weaving some magic. Victor Ramos. Gives it to Kawana. Back to Carter. Has a shot. Right into the guts of Vava. It'll be a surge kick in. Herford's going to take it. Thought the chance ran out for Ramos, but he made something of it. And Steele's going to take it quickly. Vava's down there. Oh, and it looks like he just almost rolled his ankle on that, trying to make use of it. <laughs> Referee saw nothing. The crowd saw something. Surge kick in. Yeah, Robson working hard Aiden. on the ground there. Aiden. Aiden. Two minutes to go in the first half. Surge really wanting something to show for it. But Amos on the ball. Straight through the middle. Kawana's got it. Tackled well. Big attempted slide tackle. Martin's on the side. Well defended by Hereford. Yeah. Crucial interception and a timeout now called by the Rapids. Yeah, that was a big play there. Lurking at the back post with the runners for the Rapids. So they survived that. And a welcome timed out as well, probably, for the surge. Yeah, game opening up. A few half chances. I think the surge have grown into this game. You know, early on it was the Rapids with all the possession and creating the opportunities, but Ramos has had a, had a few good opportunities. We had the earlier free kick there. You just feel like that one will create that momentum here for the surge, and, and then maybe they can push on. Absolutely, just, just one to, to really get that belief in there. I'm sure they believe, but, you know, one goal in there and they'll, they'll get their tails up. A few more things will go their way. We're just under two minutes. We've got one minute 50 left in the half. Four fouls to the surge, two to the Rapids. I think as well, you know, the games against Auckland City, class outfit, and, and both teams almost deflated from that. So hard to kind of bring that energy after those two games each against Auckland City and, and now I guess the opportunity is what's in front of them. Yeah, 100%. The surge, a few players down as well. So a lot of their players getting more game time. And a few of their uh, top players getting a lot more game time. Have to recover well before next weekend for the national tournament. 
at Trust's Arena. This is also smart here from the Rapids going to the fifth man just to tire out the surge. As you said before, limited players. And those players on the court are going to have to put in big minutes. And it's, it's even harder when you're being forced to defend at fifth man. Risky for the Rapids, but a, a smart play. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all teams will back themselves to keep the ball. Nice one-touch play there. Kawana not quite getting away with it. <clears throat> and then the body use well. Just get the ball back in. Surge kick and Ramos has it. Takata. Takata looking for that diagonal ball. The deadly one to Ramos. Vava's turned well. Hit the back post. And it's defended by Kawana coming back. The pivot now sitting in a fixo position. Ramos is going on top. Carter. Whipping up a spell. Ramos, good position. Oh, it's a it's a great shot and it's deflection off Carter as well. Almost saved by the surge there. Great opportunity. Still got big. Rapids going long, defended on the head. And well poked in by Mario Ramos. Around about 20 seconds left now. Bava's got it left. Two surge men on him. End up being a rapid kick in 13 seconds to go. Ethan Martin with a good receive, roll and shot. Oh, and that's a big collision. And that'll be the end of the first half. Yeah, good first half there from the Rapids. I think the surge definitely still in it. Just one goal will change the momentum of the game. But for the Rapids, I think they just need to hold on possession for as long as they can. The pressure will build and the longer the time goes in the game, the surge will have to start taking risks and that's where the opportunities will open up for the surge. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau. Working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. G'day and welcome back to Trust Bar Arena. It's been a wonderful weekend in the Bay of Plenty and we're so glad that you could join us. Coming right up next is the second half of Game 2 of the Battle of the Kaimais. The Bay of Plenty Surge versus the Waikato Rapids. Both teams getting taught a bit of a lesson this weekend by Auckland City. A bit of a super team. What have you, what have you taken from that? Yeah, no. I mean, Auckland City. They look, they look sharp. The way that they're able to rotate three fours and bring the same level of intensity in each of those fours. Slightly different each time they've played, but no, they've they've been the standout this weekend. And I, I look forward to the battles between Auckland City and Capital as well as Southern United. I think the Dragons can bounce back from the last series and, and you know, make that top four. So it, it's going to be a fascinating weekend next weekend. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And and we're away with kickoff. And definitely, from what I've seen with Auckland, is, is they have huge depth and the accuracy and the intent is there. Yeah, I mean, even as an example, Sean McKenty played for the Futsal Whites, was left off the roster for this weekend for Auckland City. So there's still a lot of depth that didn't even play this weekend. Unbelievable. Ramos getting a nice toe poke inside. And the surge controlling it now in the attacking half. They're going to want to not rush it. Good ball speed. Good accuracy. Gets Taramos on the side. Oh, and Carter was there ready to snap at it, but Steele gobbled, gobbled it up. Throws it out to Martin. And it's poked out by McMillan. It's a defensive hitter by lovely lady in the crowd. So it's good to see a fan involved in the game from the crowd. Yeah. Awake and aware. Nice touch from Martin. To Borden, back to Martin. Just tries to give that little chip down to the back post for Sharpland's run. But it's well defended. It's got smothered by the keeper and the fixo there. I think I'd like to see the surge try something different, an early fifth man in this half, just to almost take it to the Rapids to put a bit of pressure on them early. Yeah, I like that suggestion. Rabbits can be a very strong fifth man team. We've seen a lot of success in the previous Super League series. 
putting a lot of pressure on some of the top teams. We just have to see how Coach Mario Ramos decides to play it. For now, I've got the Rapids controlling the ball in the attacking half. We go all the way back down to the end to steal. We'll play it to Ericsson. Ericsson turns on it, gives and goes. Right idea, not, the, not the quite the right execution. We and Sergio go to a 2-2. Two -two. Talked about it at the break, just the way that you want the Rapids to hold position to build pressure. And if they just force it too much, I think that's what's going to keep it in, you know, keep the surge in this game. Two goals, as we know, not a big lead in futsal, so they'll be wary of that, I'm sure. Masterfully controlled on the line by Maxwell Eriksson. Got a big psych out of the surge players and they stopped for a bit. And the ball's turned over. Surge had it. Can they control it here? We also talked to at the break just about an earlier shot coming from the surge. You know, getting into good positions but almost waiting for that perfect opportunity rather than the opportunity that presents itself. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be, be good to see uh, a few more snapshots. Be good to see Surge pepper the target a little bit more. But to get those chances through a bit of patience. Good, good defence. 3v2 for a second. McMillan gives his toe and it's come off the sidebar. And Steele did well there to get out early and just cut the angle down there for McMillan. In the end, just a shot off target. Good intent, though. The combinations and ball speed. The Rapids now. They're going to get some, some pressure. They get some defensive pressure from the surge. They want it. Good tackle. I think they're a great example what we were talking about. It, it's all for the shot there, yeah. but waiting for that perfect opportunity, just hit a toe yeah. in there and put the keeper under some pressure. Borden trying to get forward and blocked by Carter. Carter wins it back. Well done. Can almost be patient. No, he can't and gets tackled by Sharplin and Carter will win it back for his team. Can he keep it? Borden gets it back. And the surge will reset. And their defensive half court pressure's on now. Oh, what a slow motion sliding tackle from McMillan. Rubbing his hammy. He's spent a lot of time on the court this he weekend. Has. has McMillan. I'm sure he's got a few grazes up and down those legs. Pressure on Martin. Erickson gets the nuts and gets the ball back. Completes the nutmeg. Martin to Borden. Going down the line to Sharplin. Back to Borden to Martin. Sharplin. A little bit wayward. I had to just kind of swipe at it to get anything on, and it's gone to the opposite side, giving the surge a chance to change some of their players. I think you could hear the bench there just asking the Rapids to hold the ball. And again, we talked about that pressure coming from possession. Two goals to the good. The longer they can hold the ball, the more it forces the surge into taking a risk. Oh, nice little flick over. Great skill. He's gone for that ball, and it's decisive. Back post. And the goal has been rocked. I think it was Ethan Martin sliding in to defend Ramos coming in on the back post. That's the best chance for the surge of the game. Yeah, that was a golden opportunity there for surge. Just unfortunate that they couldn't finish it. It's a great ball there for Kiwana, and almost an own goal, I think. Oh. 
Ball turned over and then turned over again. Howard's done well. Nice feet. Goes for the shot. Hits the post again. Goodness gracious me, Vinny. That is the second time they've hit the post in short succession. Oh, and a goal scramble. See the shot on and the goal rocked again. They're definitely putting pressure on the goal, but not in the right places. Yeah, it's unlucky at the moment from the search. They're creating opportunities and Steele got big there as well, made the save. Oh, well done, McMillan. Take a shot. And he does. Keenan now. It's a hopeful ball. One has gone up. And he'll settle with McMillan in the defensive half. Ramos Goes for that deadly diagonal ball. Defended well by Wallace. Yeah, it looks like Carter and the fifth man jumper ready to come on there, Vinny. So they are going to go early into the fifth man. Here we go. Want to see some ball speed here, Vinny? Move the ball around, try and create those lanes to get the dangerous passes across. Good, they're moving up and up. Keeping the ball moving as well. Carter's gone quite deep there at the moment. That's a great turn and shot from Ramos. Good save there from Steele. Had to be aware. Again, I'd just like to see a little bit more ball speed there from the surge. Just move it around. Move that defensive structure of the Rapids. And that'll be a corner. Yeah, I'd like to see, a l as you say, they've got the ball speed, but just maybe one person off the ball just dragging a defender, opening up, opening up a space. They've showed some good patience. And the ball speed's good, but... You can't just pass it around the back the whole time. The score doesn't change that way. It's the Kiwana. Just got to try and create that angle ball across at the moment. And this is what you want here. Bit of space here for the shot. Big deflection from a shot. Sees a kick in from the surge. Quite set up there properly, Finney. Obviously, the keeper there, Carter, and the fifth man jumper shouldn't have taken that kick in. Should have left it for someone else. Well, to get McMillan him. was right there beside him. Mm. Now the chance there, so they lost that opportunity for another touch, and then it's been turned over. Still some good high energy from the surge. They won that ball back. Searching ball forward from Tobias gets blocked by McMillan. It'll be a Rapids kick in the top of their defensive half. And again, I think this is where the Rapids need to hold on to that position and just be able to build pressure and not allow the surge to go into the fifth man. And just as you say that, it gets lumped over the top. That's been the story all weekend, Vinny. I'll start to ask for something or point out a state of play and they'll do the complete opposite. Surge back to fifth man. Ramos has it on halfway. Looking for an option. Sizing it up. Goes for that deliberate ball and it's decisive right through the middle. Meets Howard at the back post and gets smothered by Steele. Golden opportunity there. Howard. Bit of space as well but just couldn't get the shot away. It's a great play and well defended. Aaron Carter getting a bit of a talking to for kicking the ball away. No repercussion, but thought maybe he was getting talked to about having his socks so low. 
I think he survived there. Oban Hawkins-esque from previous weekends. <laughs> Maybe a little more subtle than him, though. Still time in this one, isn't there? Still plenty of time. Oh, can, Kawana's found the back post. And was that Sharplin that's received it in the goal mouth and taken taken a shot that's gone just wide. A lot of energy now. Kawana's got it to Ramos. Again, I think this time the Rapids weren't switched on there. Just too easy for the surge to get out of that. And Carter flirting with it. Oh, if you don't push the boundaries, you don't know where the line is. But he's pushing that boundary. I think this is a good counter here as well from the Rapids just using steel in that position. I'd almost like to see them go for a technical fifth man as well to compete with what the Surge are doing. That way as well, they hold possession for longer. And and I'm not sure I've actually seen that before, a fifth man v fifth man, uh, just back and forth. Well, Ronan Nyker is sitting next to me and the Canterbury Dragons side are well known for 40 minutes of fifth man. <laughs> so it can be done. Great save, good shot. But Ramos has it, is he going to save it? No. The yeah, Rapids attacking kick in. Yeah, and some of those later games in the season when you're almost, you know you've made the semis or the playoffs and teams will just happily sit at fifth man and hold the ball for 40 minutes. Terrible to watch and terrible to commentate on, Vinny. Yeah, I bet. Lovely if you're on the right side or on the right team. Yeah, it'd be fun to kick a ball around for 40 minutes. Watts back on now up top. He's found the corner. Surge back into fifth man. They're searching. Not quite desperate, but they really want that goal. I'm trying to be composed about it. Watts looking for that inside ball. Picked up by Ramos. <coughs> Watts to McMillan. Slowing it down, making sure they get a real good look at it. Aaron Carter drawing the foul from Davis Vava, and it'll be a free kick in a handy position. That first foul of the half. First foul of the half. And just under 11 minutes to go. It's just where it gets interesting for the surge, having to choose between the shot on goal or continuing to recycle possession. It's a quick first touch shot. Picked up by Ramos. Oh. And he's found Howard in a handy position. Oh. That was good work there from Sharplin tracking back, and he's won the clearance for his team. Solid defense there. But the surge able to reset. straight away right through the middle <laughs> foul called there not sure handball I think. handball missed that rapids are on it nice inside ball just not quite reaching its target damn watts does well keenan looking for the line ball that's just going out It'll be a Rapids kick in near halfway. That direct ball, wide open. Big defense by McMillan. 
just about into the end of the third quarter, into the fourth one. And that is a big chance. It's just come off the wrong side of the foot from Vava. It was absolutely whipped in by Sharplin. And I think he's lucky to win a corner from that. That's a golden opportunity for the Rapids. Still set piece, though. Got to press here to the Rapids. Oh, and the rest called a Rapids kick in. But it's a rolling ball. And that'll ease the pressure on the surge. A lot of running going on for the keeper and for Aaron Carter, this man. I'm sure this is what keepers train for when they're doing their sprints. Ten to go. Huge pressure on the surge. They're pressing him high. Big danger. I think this is where the Rapids need to stay high and not allow an easy throw here. Honest. Berg thrown, it's punched out by Steele. What oh, missed touch, it's looking up. He's gonna have to go for the clearance. Just a tiny bit over Watts there. Surgery wanting to press. Yeah, both, going out. both sides at the moment not valuing position. Just that little mistake from Ramos costing the surge and then again kicked away from the Rapids. That's good work there from the surge to beat that press. Well done. Carter's in there in the corner. Big tackle by Sharplin. Booted here by Borden. It'll be a surge kick in at the top of their defensive half. I think what I want to see from the surge here when they're in their fifth man is the fact that it's the fourth game of the weekend. The longer they can hold the ball on for, the more tired the defence is going to be, the less opportunity there is to sub and to change those players. But they're just kind of forcing that pass a little bit too early. Great opportunity set up there. It's been tipped over the bar by Steele. And of course, as I say that, a good opportunity. But again, I think the chance here is to tire out this defence. There'll be heavy legs. And then the opportunities will come for the surge. Bit of passion there coming from the surge bench, but I think that's what I said. They weren't valuing that position. They weren't moving it around enough, the surge, and just forced it a little bit too much into the centre and the rapids. They were able to jump on that. Absolutely. It squirted free, and, and uh, Jonathan Tobias was able to get a first-time shot off. They went nicely into the middle of the net. Just forcing it as a surge. That looks a bit nicer. Up nice and high now. Looking for that patience. That was a good patient decision. Ramos comes up with it. He'll come up with a corner. Probably just lacking that decision-making ability just taking a bit longer on it than they need to yeah that, i think it's waiting for that that shooting lane to open mm. once that ball speeds up and you're moving the ball around a little bit more the defense is having to shuffle from side to side just at the moment it's about three passes and then a shot 
It just needs to, they need to be looking at quick passes back and forward. Too many touches there from Carter. Again from Ramos, just two touch, move the ball around. That's better. Yeah, this is better. Nice. From the Meyer brothers. Nice and quick. That's where the gaps open up. That looked like a handball. Protest from the surge to Nell Vale. All it be, it'll be a corner. I'm not one to get involved in a handball discussion with the referees. But I think it is still surge ball here. Taken quickly. Two touch and pass. Back into space. Robson there just having to make sure that the ball was on the line. Vava getting caught up for that earlier. The ball not being played on the green line. I think that was a bit rushed there from the Rapids. They're 3-0 up. They've got the ball turned over after defending in the fifth man. That's where they need to just take their time and, and get in position. Doesn't matter about the goalkeeper getting back. It's not close enough at the moment to worry about rushing. Good ball through the middle. It's a goal! Aaron Carter! Great build-up play, and that's what they were looking for. A bit of patience and a bit of decisiveness. They cut right through the middle and found Carter to finish off. It looked like a bit of a bobbled finish that went over the sprawling steel in the end. Well, it was just good, good fifth-man play there. Just moving the ball around, got it to the middle. Had to collapse in defence, did the Rapids... And he was able to turn and get the shot away, which just changes the game a little bit now with that one goal. Massively. The surge will believe now. And like you were saying before, it, it took a, a bit of ball speed and with a two-touch passing. And they moved it around and they found the gap. And it's that easy. Now it's up high for Daniel Watts. It's a nice turn on him. Finds Aaron Carter. Tries to nutmeg Tobias. And it's been called Caught a ball. corner. Shouts from Coach Ramos. Don't force, don't force. So we've been saying here in the commentary box. Two touch. Nice and patient. Shouts of handball, not called. Again, that one was just forced again there. Didn't need to go down that way. Just look to come back across the court, recycle, shift that defence across. The ball speed, not quite what it was before the goal there as well. Look at timeout coming for the Rapids as well the next time the ball's out. I'd like that ball speed got up there again. It still wasn't quite there. Yeah, good timeout caught here by Jet Limp. Just needs to reset his players. I think after letting that goal in, it's a good opportunity just to slow things down, reset the defensive structure for the fifth man, and also just ultimately give your players a bit of a break. Absolutely. Six minutes to go in the game. Still one foul apiece only. Very low fouling affair. Yeah, I think just the way that uh, the surge have been playing in this half has meant that there hasn't really been the need to foul at the moment. And, and I think, again, that's one of the opportunities for the Rapids when they get the ball is to look to beat players down the line in not dangerous position as well as is hold on to that possession to build the pressure that is going to cause the surge to come in and foul. I think the other thing to note as well, we haven't seen Ethan Martin back onto the court for a while, unless they're saving him for when they're not defending the fifth man. The players with, with better legs can defend that. But at the moment, I, I think if the surge can get one back in the next couple of minutes, it's going to make a very interesting end of this game. Absolutely, I agree. Six minutes, still plenty of time. And we're away again. Patrick Steele just going to buff it over the top. 
He's probably looking for Max Ericsson. And JP Priest is going to do the same. He's going to yeah. swap out the Aaron Carter to the fifth man. I think that's what the Surge are looking for as well, and that's where I think the Raptors need to to hold on to that position. Just for a couple of minutes as well, just to build a bit of pressure on the Surge. Advantage now. Ramos goes through the middle. Foul called. Not sure if that was the right decision from Ramos. I couldn't see it from his angle, but it looked like he had a teammate in each corner. Did win the foul though. Ericsson can't believe it. It just ran into the back there of Ramos. And a talking to from the referee. Take about Ramos to Howard. Back to Howard. Big pressure. Big high press. Can't just keep going back. He's done well. And he's put McMillan into a load of space. He's cut in. Shouts of foul. Ramos has it, and a shot just trickles by. I think it's it's tapped out by the hair on his chin by Maxwell Eriksson. Well, Steeler come forward there, so it was almost an open goal, but they just couldn't get enough power on the shot there, could the surge. Back in now, surge in fifth man. Nice toe hack, and McMillan comes up big. That's the second time this weekend McMillan has... Got a shot out of absolutely nowhere. And he's brought his side back into this. That is huge. The, that was split seconds between rolling it on the sole of his foot and hitting it with his toe with deadly accuracy into the side netting. Five minutes to go here. It's still anyone's game, Vinny. And the surgery pressing on with fifth man. Why wouldn't you? Surge trying to get out of their half. The Rapids are pressing them. Doing a good job. Oh, and that is a great ball. Carter's one-on-one. -on -one. How does he do it? Oh, and it's an incredible save off the line by Davis Vava. Wow. That is some futsal from both sides. Carter to go for the chip, but Vava there and just heads that one Unbelievable. away. Unbelievable. Carter's rolled it off his foot to give the keeper the big see you later. Oh, and Robson's got a chance. He just scuffs his shot. That play from Vavar is where the goal. Wow. How decisive is that going to be in this game? See changes coming as well for the Rapids. Kawana now on the ball in the attacking half. Gives it to Howard. Little touch forward. Picked up by the keeper. Going to go forward to find Ericsson. And he won't get any purchase out of that. I think Kai Borden on the court probably needs a few more minutes for the Rapids here. Just Howard finds Carter. Kawana's on the back post. Can't find him. Oh, Ramos gets a shot off. Nice little roll of the foot. Four minutes remaining. Here at Trust Power Arena, some game, Vinny. Some game to finish off an amazing weekend of action. And a great delivery there, but the Rapids got two players forward. Kawana's on it, trips on the ball. But the Rapids just have to be smart here, hold on to possession. The longer they can hold on to possession, the more pressure it puts back on the surge. But every time the surge get back in possession, they're going to fifth man, which makes it interesting for the neutral fan. Go, 
Absolutely. Ramos now McMillan on halfway, taking his time. Want to see some ball speed from the surge. It's a nice pass. Goes inside. Well set up. That last pass was just defended well by the Rapids. Again, it's that ball speed we want here from the surge. Couple of touches. Oh, and it's a great shot on target. Where did that come from? <laughs> Howard. He's had enough. <laughs> Good angle. And forces the save from Steele. I think we had a good angle from where we were watching it. It looked like it was nestling into the top corner and it was a great save in the end. But the surge putting huge pressure on. Carter in the corner. Nice little turn. Just gone out for a corner kick. Bored in there on the spot. Just kicking it out. Three minutes remaining. Vidi. Foul's not really concern, a concern at the moment. Oh, errant touch made up for it, Ramos. It's a great inside ball. Cries of foul from the surge bench. They're passionate. Wow. It's Patrick gonna... Steele will roll it out. Some high pressure. It's going to go long. Almost gets it back. This is where the Rapids need to settle it down, just hold position for a bit. Big tackle. <laughs> nice little scoop pass and well defended. Well won. Time out here, I think, from Coach Mario Ramos. Still time here for the surge, two and a half minutes remaining. What will this game have in store? It's already been an absolute derby ding dong. These two sister teams. I think again here, Coach Mario Ramos will be asking for some ball speed. Over at Jet Lim, we'll just be talking about how we want to be defending that fifth man and, and just holding on to possession when they have it. They're holding on at the moment, uh, the Rapids. What do you think Jet Lim just told his troops? I think it's about just that, that shuffle of the defensive structure when they're when they're defending this fifth man and then as well when they get hold of the ball just to take their time they don't necessarily have to score if they win possession of the ball just to be smart about it so they don't make a mistake full press coming from the surge here as well Good work there from the surge to win the ball back. And we'll see Carter and fifth man back onto the court. Two minutes to go now. No rush, though. Plenty of time to... Oh, one pass. Could have taken a touch there. There's a good opportunity. Carter runs back to swap with the keeper. Good opportunity there. And again, I think from steel, they're just throwing away position. The longer they can wind down the clock here, the Rapids. Recovered by the surge. Nice little chip pass. He's found inside. Oh, and it's millimeters away. It was so well set up. Wow, what an opportunity there for the surge. Minute 40 remaining. And Mia can't convert that one from close range. Another gridiron pass. Doesn't really seem like the most sensible thing to do right now, but... Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to see the Rapids hold on to 
possession and that and, and, and look to play it out. Because in that way, Surge have to set up defensively and can't just kind of rely on the ball going out and then turning it back over to get into this situation again. Well, it's almost like they're not backing themselves to keep the ball at the moment. And now Surge are doing just that. They're backing themselves to keep the ball nice and patient. What's the ref going to call there? All sorts of action going on. It's a yellow card for Mario Ramos. I think he got in the way of the keeper there as Steele was going for his shot on goal. Looks like he dangled his leg out for that attempt at goal. Minute to go here. Again, what? What is going on there? We'll never know, but the Surge have it back and they've gone straight into fifth man. It's just under a minute to go. Strap yourself in, folks. What can the Surge do here? Can the Rapids hold on? Still anyone's game. My boy. It'll be a kick in. Aaron Carter going for the cheeky nutmeg. Not quite coming off. And they're back building pressure. Nice two-touch play here. Oh. Not a bad setup. You don't mind that if it's on target. With 29 seconds to go. The Rapids are gonna go with the same. And they're going to give Surge an opportunity again. They were just looking, still looking for Varva on the back post, trying to head it in. A headed goal's worth a goal and a half in futsal, isn't it? <laughs> just like a toe hacks with a goal point two. He save it. Oh, he's sliding. Desperation there. 21 seconds on the clock now. Yeah, it's getting to that time here for the Surge. They've really got to press. And I think as well, from the point of view of... The Rapids have just got to hold on to the ball. Oh, that little fakie to, to reach for it by Borden just put my eye off. Yeah, I did like the idea of Kai Borden being back on the court, just settling things down for the Rapids. Seven seconds remaining. The Rapids hanging on at the moment. There you go. The Rapids hanging on to this game. Vinny, thanks for calling us through that one. Yeah, you're so welcome. The Rapids are absolutely ecstatic about it. And a big thank you to everyone for joining us this weekend here at Trust Power Arena. The teams will be up in Auckland next weekend for three days of futsal action. Thanks to Vinny again for calling these two games. For myself, I'm off for the birth of my second child, so I won't be back on the mic for the rest of the series. So it's been an absolute pleasure calling you through these games. We've put together a highlights package for you today, and until next weekend, stay safe. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Bye.
Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.